Hello there. Come closer out of the dark and sit around my campfire, why not? My name is of no great importance, but the stories I have to tell you are... Witness, four lost souls journeying together through a grim world of perilous adventure. Be warned, though. The stories are not for the faint-hearted, and once you have heard them, you cannot unheard them. Bear witness to the Vagabond Chronicles. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, look, lads. <laughs> Center marching. Let the undead take the young gag down with you. Oh! Ah! Ziggy, ziggy, ziggy. Whoa, no, sir. We gotta go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ziggy, ziggy. Whoa, oh, baby. Let's give it to him right it's now. It's everywhere. Sling some arrows at him, Del. Matthias! Matthias dragging me out! I'm after! I'm after! I'm after! You don't fight it. You may not be able to kill him, but you're dead. You're trying to kill a lot. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. It won't be long before they bring back us. Take me to the arms again. And please get the fuck out of here. I'm sick and sick and Oh no, I said, we gotta go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, I'm sick and sick and Oh, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go now. I said, Let's we gotta go, go now. Right here, right now. We gotta go now. Silly asshole, always trying to fight what he can't. Right now, yeah. Ah! Holy shit! Holy fuck, it's the Vagabonds! Holy ho! 
what? <laughs> what was that? What do you mean, what was that? It was my entrance going, holy fuck, it was the Vagabonds. <laughs> he just blasted everybody's ears starting, apart as well. Starting with a swear kneel. Starting okay? with a curse word. That's okay. It's all right. We're adults here. We're all adults. Is, is this show rated for oh, that? Dude, this channel is rated. Everything is fucking mature. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Okay. Sorry we've been away. I have been literally slammed with about five different projects. It's been a bit full on, um, and I wanted some time with my little one, too. So, thank you for all behaving. I was going to say, no, that's not right. Uh, thank you for waiting <laughs> and being patient with us, and welcome to the fucking Vagabonds. So let's say a very quick hello to the Vagabonds. What's up, my Vagabonds? How y'all doing? Hello. Hello. Hey. Hiya. Hi. Good. Hi. <laughs> Just so if anybody is wondering, yes, this is a mature channel. The Discord is 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 family friendly. This place is definitely not. So if you have the, uh, if you're if you're basically you're easily offended, probably now is a good time to step away from those earbuds and just turn off and imagine you you never really tuned in the first place because uh, we swear a lot. That's fine. Um, <laughs> away and shove it up your arse. <laughs> exactly. That. In, in Exactly that. Um, Jeez, wow! <laughs> yeah, we just came in. We just came in hot there, Neil. We did. I, I literally put down the bags and tucked my little one asleep, um, like all of ten minutes ago. So I'm running on, running on, That's running on it. vapor it's right now. You spent all weekend with the kid. You're just like, I'm going to go swearing crazy now. <laughs> uh, uh, and Neil, no, no. There is one other point, Tom. What's up? There's okay. One other point, Tom. Neil has picked up some inspiration, some sort of core material on one of the characters who's in this show over the weekend, haven't you? Have I? <laughs> what? 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 Well, well, funny thing, funny thing, Ratty, be in your brain. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I spent a little bit of time with my dad. I'm fresh of, I have a lot of inspiration <laughs> for Gary the Brain. Yeah, he still doesn't know, he still doesn't know that you're his brain. I haven't decided to tell him yet. So I'm not sure how to break that news. Anyway, very quickly. You want to be there when you tell him. I know. Very quick. He'll just go. What was that then? Is it what? Really? I'm a brain. Oh. Oh. All right. Okay. Whose brain? Tom. Oh, I like Tom. Uh, is he all right? Is he still? Is he not right? Is he writing? What's he writing then? Uh, children's books. Oh, film. Really? Yeah, he'll be like that. So that's, that's his reaction. Yeah. Um, so very yeah. quickly, hello to everybody in the chat. Hi to the new people that have joined us. We'll explain what the fuck's going on in a second. Um, hello to our mods. Thank you very much. Not sure who's in yet. I haven't seen... Oh, whoa there, Veronica. See, whoa there, Veronica. Not sure if uh, Shannon or Shannon. Yogo there. Is Yogo there as well? Are you Shannon? He's Shannon. Shannon is there. I've seen Shannon. He's Shannon. Um, so hi, I everybody. I see Yago, but... Mm. Hey. Hello to everybody, and um, everybody. welcome to the Vagabond Chronicles. So we are going to do our introductions. We're going to introduce the Vagabonds. Uh, we're going to go in our character initiative order, and then we're going to get round to the whole what the fuck is this game for anybody that's new and just joining in going, what the hell is this game, and what are you all doing, and what the hell was that music thing that introed? By the way, uh, sorry about uh, the rehashing the music. It's an old classic, but I didn't have time to record any new music this week. Um, I can only apologize for Tom so much. I think I think it's all right that we occasionally bring out a classic. I think it's that all right. That was a classic. That was yeah. retro vagabond. That was pure retro vagabond. I mean, it has nothing to do with the episode or the episode before, but it's a yeah, classic. A little so. bit. It's like the skeletons and shit, you know. Things. Hey, Yogo. Yeah. What's up? Oh, yes, I see Yogo. There we are. Um, so let's go around and introduce ah, the vagabond hey, folks. So starting with initiative of characters order, which is basically how fast they move in real in the game and probably in real life too. Let's start with our elf, definitely not on the shelf. Oh, wait. <laughs> Del, who's played by <laughs> Blue Owls Medic. What's up, Blue? How you doing? Blue? Hello. I'm good. And just to let chat know, uh, yeah, it does say that we are streaming Resident Evil 7 right now. I changed it. <laughs> I changed it. Ah, oh, fuck, I didn't <laughs> change it. Son of a bitch. I did everything else so, but problem this. Exists. <laughs> all right, all right. We've got a lot of new people expecting RE7, and, and hopefully you'll stay for the humor. <laughs> Of which I guess that's part Please of it. Please stay. Please stay. Us Check us out. This is, don't worry. It it's, feels a bit weird, but you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be fine. And it's still us. It's still us here. Um, we're playing re RE7 soon as well. It's, we're playing RE7 on <laughs> Tuesday? Tuesday, I think. So, yeah. So, Tuesday. stay away. This is the new DLC. Sure. Whatever whatever floats your boat, whatever keeps you here. That's fine. Um, so, sorry, Blue. But go yeah, ahead. I'm, I'm Del. I play uh, Del Amira, and she is... I'm an outlaw, rogue, um, elf, archer extraordinaire and i have a war dog named fleck you do he's your um, surrogate life partner awesome. now who is yeah he's he's my he's the best boyo <laughs> um <laughs> 
But yeah, that, that's what's going on with me and right. my doggo. That's right. And a relative, in game terms, a relatively new addition. But obviously, you've been streaming yeah, new, for a long new time. Yeah, new friend. New, new friend. friend. New friend. About a week old. And already regretting the day that, that she met them. Um, next up is an NPC by the name of Zig, Zig, is it Siegfried or Zygmunt? Siegfried, isn't it? Siegfried Hauptmann. Siegfried. Corporal, yeah. as she's now technically calling himself Captain uh, Siegfried Hauptmann. Uh, Ziggy to his friends, which means everybody calls him Siegfried. Um, he's a 17-year-old, very proficient warrior who is deeply unproficient at social gatherings. And that's kind of what you need to know about him for now. He's basically, this, this Vagabond Chronicles Cartman is probably the best way. I get a lot of satisfaction about doing things I'm not supposed to do in real life. You, you've turned him into, the, he was a little bit more, I think since we've taken over playing him, He's become the Cartman, hasn't he? He's become Cartman. Man. He has become right. a bit of a dick. He's a bit of a dick. He's kind of a racist with uh, elves and dwarves and gnomes and things. He sort of thinks the Empire is the bee's knees and everything else sucks. So, yeah, you know. I think it's pretty cool, actually. You get to like live out that kind of, you know, Ziggy fantasy we all know and love. Um, so that's Ziggy. Next up is our hedge wizard. What is it? Ratty Very Tatty. Played by, <laughs> uh, played by Thomas DeVille. What's up, Tom? Hello. Hi. Yeah, I play Ratty, who is a hedge wizard. And a hedge wizard for people, like, he literally lives in hedges. That's number one. But also a hedge wizard is kind of a wizard that just sort of picks up bits of magic randomly with no training and just kind of uses them. You know, he's, so he's very random. He's like a kind of a scarecrow -y guy who has magic. And he's got um, magical ferrets yes, um, who them. help him out with that called um, Noodle and Mr. Spidge that he found earlier in the adventure. Um, he His wizard robe is a robe from an inn that he stole the first... <laughs> well, I, I, it may have been free, actually. You know how it's you go to an inn and they give you... It was probably free. Yeah. Um, he might be worried that he stole it, though, and that he, doesn't just, he just doesn't know that they give you away free stuff. But yeah, it's literally just a bath. Magical. Um, so he wears that. Um, last episode, he... He did just make friends with a, a really wonderful chicken called Mabel on his head, uh, <laughs> and then and then Neil blew Mabel up. Baboom, oh. baboom, buddy, baboom. Look at him. Listen to him enjoying it. I listen blew the fuck out of him, man. I blew the fuck. <laughs> out of him. Um, he is. He yeah. is oh. Mabel is anyway. scattered to the winds, my friend. He is. They are. I don't know, actually know what happened to Mabel. We'll have to find out this episode. But Nuggets yeah. everywhere. It was basically a direct Nuggets hit on the chicken. Everywhere. It was a direct AOE attack on the chicken. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the bad guy's literally aimed at the, for the chicken, which feels... <laughs> personal? Feels, <laughs> feels, feels personal, doesn't it, Tom? Feels personal. This is Tom's going to have the John Wick moment coming up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is the hope. Oh, yeah, it is, it is, you know, yeah. Can literally, next scene, black suit, shades, <laughs> two Berettas. He's going to go to town on those, those bad guys. And so... There's going to be a lot yeah, of headshots. What have I created? There's going to be a lot of headshots in this episode, guys. Do, do you know <laughs> whose chicken that was? It's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you have angered the devil. It was his chicken. <laughs> John Ratigan fucking Wick. Ratigan fucking yeah. Wick. All right. Yeah. Um, so lastly, but not leastly, is our um, is our, our Swiss Army gnome, Bondo, played by Jim. Hello, everybody. Oh, somebody's got their thing on. Yeah, not sure who that is. Tom. Whoever's got their thing on, please turn the thing off. Turn your thingy you off, go. Tommy. I'm going to get a drink. Go, yes. Jim. Go, Jim. Anywho. So, Bondo. Short of stature, long on ideas. Good at engineering, has delusions of grandeur in that area, and some serious cranial trauma. And now, finally, some armor. Anyway, Bondo is a pharmacist turned engineer slash militiaman who is slowly becoming more of a fairly tidy fighter but has now got an awful lot of PTSD thrown into the mix so uh, yeah enjoy that was amazing that was Thank that you. was super slick intro to Bondo um, I know. we need to work on our elevator pitches here yeah Tom. sure <laughs> <laughs> all right all right folks um, I, I left yeah, to get a drink it's a stick and a man it's a man stick yeah no, um 
I have no idea what you all talked about. I went to get a drink, but I hope it was decent and, and funny. All about you. All right, fine. Um, so that's the Vagabonds. Welcome, Vagabonds. So um, this <coughs> is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. First edition, because we're that fucking old. We played with some funky rules. We like to take, be fast and loose with reality. Um, but this is essentially a high fantasy meeting low fantasy. It's very gritty. It's very dark. It's heavy. This is reminiscent of our world. We use... Uh, the, our world's sort of atlas, and we sort of re um, they have so Games Workshop reimposed um, their own world on top of it. So there's sort of a lot of familiarity. Like for instance, the Empire is reminiscent of the Holy Roman Empire. Estilia is basically like Spain under Aragon and uh, Ferdinand, and Bretonia is sort of like Knights of the Round Table kind of esque. Uh, Lady of the Lake, for instance. You have dragons, you have monsters, you have goblins and orcs, and all kinds of horrible things like that. You also have cultists, which eat away at the core of all societies. Uh, magic is scarce and very dangerous. It is licensed, and if you are unlicensed, like our ratty, uh, you can get witch hunted. Um, yeah, they can go witch hunter on your ass, which is never good. So bear that in mind, folks, as we step into the world of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Holy shit! Bam! Here we go, folks. So, last time, and people that were new, this is Mabel the chicken. Or was? A happy chicken. A happy chicken. Uh, a happy-go-lucky chicken with a lot of life and so much to live for. And was happy pecking yet. Yet, through, the, through the middle of the town, which is Frugen. in my prime! <laughs> which is Frugen. Frugelhofen, uh, our boys who've been wrecking had discovered a waterfall which has been surrounded on either side of the waterfall by murderous undead crows which attacked them about three or four uh, episodes ago. Uh, they came back past... Clear. What? To be clear, that's our only way out. That is it? your only way out as well. The, uh, otherwise you have to go into the valley and basically mountain climb your way through this thing, which is impossible. Uh, certainly for you at the moment. So Frugelhofen is essentially, although the people of Frugelhofen don't know this, is cut off. Um, both uh, our two boys, Jim, uh, sorry, um, Bondo and Ratty, are making their way back into the village. And they saw, I believe, I can't remember quite what happened. I didn't actually get a chance to finish it. They saw one of the villagers, and as they were talking, uh, the bombardment out of nowhere from the hills across to the northeast, actually, uh, rained down fiery skull death and exploded into the center of town and on buildings around here. We are actually going to freeze it there, folks, and we're going to rewind 36 hours and pick up Blue and Zygmunt as they wake up from the mother of all... Well, actually, they're not hungover. They're just basically incredibly incredibly sore from their last uh, week or so of fighting. Um, so Blue, we're going to start with you because you've got XP to spend and shit to do. I do. Yeah, all right. I so do. let's narrate, talk our way through this to get back to the action reasonably quickly. Um, so okay. Ziggy is sort of like wakes up and is sort of sees you. The two other boys have left. You know, you can sort of hear their voices as they walk out. They're sort of debating the finer points of chicken. And apparently you see Ratty with a chicken on his head balancing it, showing Bondo going, Hey Bondo, look at this. I got a chicken. It's on my head. As they walk out the doors. Um, That's what, exactly what he said. Literally That's verbatim. exactly both words. It's on my head. Look. Yeah. Very happy about it. I do listen. Very happy. I do listen back to the... I know you lot though. I do listen... Try if I can to listen back to the episodes for consistency. Yeah. <laughs> so Blue, um, you have slept a good like 10, 11 hours straight through. You've had a reasonable so amount of food. You're really pretty refreshed. You got back to the village. The Vernikers, which was the farm um, farmstead people that you rescued from the skeleton attack who lost half their family, are pretty fucking traumatized, are being looked after and cared by the people of Frugelhofen, which obviously they're quite close to. Hector Brioche, who's the de facto mayor of this tiny hamlet, is uh, usual taking control, taking command, and helping everybody and being incredibly lovely to people. Um, you think, you, oh no, you don't know this yet. Actually, two of your old friends have come back, but let's get to that later. Um, what do you want to do? Um, you've woken up, um, the dog Fleck is like literally like lying on your, pretty much lying, his face is next to your face so you wake up with a heady smell of fish just like hot air and fish just billowing into your face thank the well, first thing i want to do Lovely. is pet i want to give uh fleck a, a good pat because he's a good boy um and you... i want to find the source of the fish sure so you, you 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 can roll initiative if you wish oh by the way blue you might want to click on your color because that will give you your color and your access to your oh, little box of money my color? My now color? you can get okay. your color yet get your color over here Look at that, green. look at that, people, look at that. Believe it or not, I'm not blue, I'm green. <laughs> I know, you're green. I'm not going to talk about how that... Kind Let's of not talk about that, because Tom it. refuses. <laughs> All right, so you're you're back on maximum okay. wounds, by the way. I'm pretty sure we actually did that for you. So you're on oh, six. good, good, good. 
Okay. Yeah. So, what do you want to do? You've got XP, change, loose in your pocket, burning a hole, and a pocket full of dreams that are shattered because the multiverse has decided this is the wrong party for you to join. Oh, by the way, multiverse uh, Dell is currently uh -huh. um, on her own ship that she bought with her uh, money that she got from slaying that dragon. She now controls a ship and she's now sightseeing around the old, old world. <laughs> having a wonderful time. She's I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad multiverse Dell is having a wonderful time. <laughs> is living her best life. <laughs> A hashtag right, adventuring realness. Yep. <laughs> you want me to roll for initiative first? Yeah, roll for initiative to work out the source of the fish. That is a mighty. That's sixteen. What is your initiative? Just out of curiosity. It's sixty nine. Sixty nine still. Okay. Nice. So, <laughs> nice. So that's a huge. <laughs> that's a huge win. By the way, folks, anybody joining us first time, like D and D, we, it's a stat based game with bonuses and skills. But it's a percentile based game, so it's a D100 for most things, or a D10, or a D6 for damage, etc. Uh, we'll talk you through each roll by roll, but essentially that's all you need to know, that every stat they have is out of 100. And they get bonuses and increases as we go, depending on the situation. Also, brilliant fucking ideas or crazy ideas that'll get them killed is rewarded or punished as I see fit. Um, okay, so you easily identify the hot, breathy, smelly, fishy air coming from deep within the gullet of said dog, who's now like literally... <laughs> Oh, no. Hang, hang on. Hang on. <coughs> Y'all had to roll initiative just to determine that the fish smell was coming from the dude, dog. Dude, she was pretty fucked up last time. I think that's completely fair. <laughs> like she was, she lost All a right. fate point and stuff. Almost did. She was like completely fucked. Like tw two adventures of running. I think it's completely fair that she had to work out what the hell that fishy smell was coming from. Okay, so he's eating fish. Is that Clearly, he's I... eating fish. Yeah. All right. Uh, and we're near. River? Yeah, there's, like, where there, get... this is basically yeah. your brain going, where am I? Who am I? What's that fish smell? Fish smells the dog. Dog's been eating fish. We're near a river. That's how you kind of come back into the world <laughs> in this adventure. Uh, there is the oh, yeah. river, there is the river, the vast water, uh, which goes around as an ox, as a beginning of like an oxbow creation here around Frugelhofen. And at that point you realize, oh yeah, I'm in Frugelhofen. Oh yeah, we were attacked by skeletons. Oh yeah, I found the dog. Oh yeah, shit got real. Um, so you sort of collect your memories like that, piecemeal. You feel okay. very, very sore, but you feel a hell of a lot better you have done than you the last week, basically. Right. Okay. Um, so Ziggy, so I want to walk around the room and do I find Ziggy? So you sit up and the dog sort of bounces off and quite, you know, licks your hand and then bounces off. And then, and then you see him scurrying down what looks to be like a long ladder. You remember that you're actually on a mezzanine in a stable. So mm. you're surrounded by hay. You've got little cots that have been made up for you. These are permanent things, so obviously... The person who hired it, which you think was the widow LaRue or somebody. Um, obviously, this is like a quasi dormitory for travelers. Uh, next, you see Ziggy, who's just like propping himself up reading some kind of book on heraldry. He just looks at you and goes, Yeah, many a time I've woken up next to a complete dog. Morning. And just like starts thumbing his way through the book. <laughs> Such a bastard. Yeah, to catch everyone up to speed, Ziggy is a total dick to me, and yeah. I do not like him. <laughs> <laughs> Subtext probably canon is that Ziggy has the hots for Dell and just knows that Dell's super out of his league. So that's oh, he's he like putting the equivalent of pulling my hair and flirting with me. Basically, okay. he's, this is his attempt at flirtation: <laughs> is to just be rude and obnoxious and insulting to you all the time, and competitive as well. Cartman mixed with a really <coughs> pathetic loser. Yeah, pretty much. This is that's where Ziggy's at right now until Steve comes back to reclaim his character. You know. I know, but if if Doctor Steve ever comes back, like, <laughs> like what the like, fuck? His character is just gonna be like just a ruin, just just an absolutely well, we, well, he, castle. He has started. Character. He has started like doing shield bashing and shield throwing, like Captain America. So I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, give and oh, take. Yeah, I mean, that's, right? cool. that's the cool side of him that he's like. What did you call him? Capitan Empire. Capitan so Empire. Like, he mumbled in his yeah. sleep the other day. It's a it's a it's a seed I've planted in Ziggy's brain. There you go. Um, so you wake up and you sort of see where you are. You sort of everything comes crashing back into your memory. You remember exactly what happened in the last few weeks. It's been pretty horrifying, but you somehow managed to pull through with your wayward companions. Um, you, they've gone. You sort of see at this point. You do see Ratty and Bondo leave, and it looks like they're, they're full of purpose and going off to do something. Um, but uh, I guess there's a respite now. You sort of feel like there's a natural lull, and you're in the safety of a village with, you know, 80 or 90 other people. So you, you sort of feel a lot safer than you have done for the last week or so. Um, a thought occurs to you that maybe the dwarves, you don't know if the dwarves made it or not. Um, remember the dwarves, well not that you care necessarily, but it would be, they are <laughs> formidable fighters. Um, so again, from a purely safety point of view, it might be worth checking out if they made it here or not. Can I, I'm going to ask Ziggy that. 
Because I feel like I remember uh, from previous one is that he seemed very upset about stuff happening over there. Ziggy. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ziggy, yeah, Ziggy was quite taken with the um, with the Vernikers, you know, true empire people. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, he... well, the dog went down the table, the ladder. Do I follow the dog? I want to follow the dog. Sure, yeah. Have you got acrobatics? Um, to go down a ladder? <laughs> no, you could do something really cool and just like... like. You know... uh, I don't, but I dance. Can I like shimmy, shimmy, shimmy? Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can totally shimmy and flash dance your way down that ladder. Okay. I do that. You can That's Kevin Bacon down morning. that ladder. You sort of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> dun, 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 you start humming this ancient <laughs> Elvish, um, ancient Elvis, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know, jangle or whatever. And you, go, dun, 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 dun. And, you know, just substitute all the words for El ancient Elvish and you're there. Um, you, mission, mission, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you come down to the bottom and you're sort of there and like uh, Fleck is like, <laughs> and he stops and ready to pounce. But not at you, but he wants to pounce at something. He lost play. Uh, he wants to play, or? Yeah, he wants to play. He looks like he wants to play. You're no dog trainer, <laughs> clearly. Sorry. You... <laughs> I am not. No, but he, he looks like he wants something. He's, he's bouncing around you, putting his head to the ground, but his, his bum up in the air. His tail's wagging, like, really fast. I don't know. What else do you... Uh, what is it, boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love that we. Sh yeah, what is? Come on, boy, show. Sh is there a kid down a well? Yes, jump, jump. What is it? What is it? <laughs> He's like bouncing around <laughs> He's you. He's down the well. And then after a while, he looks. He shakes his head, looks around, and then just bounces at you. And he just like puts his two paws against your feet, and then bounces back again really quickly, as if you tried to bite him or something. But he's got like this look of insane happiness. I'm <laughs> This makes me happy. Um, <laughs> is he hungry? Because he just ate. He smells like fish. I, is, um... <clears throat> Why don't you go and make? Because actually, this is something quite important. Why don't you make a leadership test to try and work out Ooh, what's going okay. on with your dog? I would like to do that. All right, where's the dice? Oh, where did this go? Oh, there. It's like an elf trying to figure out a dog, which is is sort of. Like... <laughs> uh, my leadership is thirty-two. So you passed. Is that a pass? It's passed. Cool. Yeah, it's a okay, pass. Great. Yeah. So, and right. so this is because because at some point you you're going to sort of by the doing of, I'll sort of invite you to learn animal care, um, or animal. I do training. have animal care. I have animal, animal train animal training then. So okay, so, so oh, if you okay. need to do an animal test, you get plus ten for animal care because I think it's a, a certain amount of like understanding animals. I'm going to say, but if yeah, you want to yeah. develop animal training, which will be specific to canines, you can sort of do that by the doing of it because you own a dog now. And you're sort of reasonably intelligent to work out these things. So if you want to do that, that's an option for you later on, okay? Um, but that'll take cool. a good. That'll take a good month or so like, of game time. That can't just be learned overnight. Um, cool. Okay. So right. you feel like you have time. Siggy sort of swung down as well. He's come down a little bit as well, and he's sort of got his sword out, and he's marching towards um, what looks to be like a, a kind of like a stockade thing. That he's sort of put a little pot. You notice he's put a bucket on top of it already. And there's a bucket on the side of this thing, a little piece of wood that's jutting out. He's got his sword out, and his um, he just stands there. And he sort of takes a few steps back, gets his, gets his shield, and just hurls the shield at this thing. It just goes, boosh, boosh, and then he just catches it back in his hand. And in fact, he catches it back on the arm strap. So he goes, boosh, boosh, and it just like launches it straight forward. And it bounces back and just catches it, and it's still humming like. Rawr, 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 rawr. I mean, right, you didn't. By the way, by the way, um, you didn't notice that as he was throwing it. You Fleck like bit you very nipped you on the hand. <laughs> you turned down to look at him, and you hear this boing, and then you turn back, and Ziggy's just standing there with the, with the shield. So whatever happened, you didn't see. But FYI, it was pretty cool. Is he trying to flex? I think you think he's trying to flex. Everybody else in chat, he just did a wicked shield throw, but Dell doesn't know that. Captain America did. Yeah, he's basically <laughs> Captain America did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what's happening in front of you. What are you up to, Dell? Oh, gosh. Okay, so what What did I learn from the dog, from my leadership? Like, is okay. he trying to show me so something? So you think he's just trying to play. You think this is him, like, pouncing practice or... Just like kind of bonding with you generally, but he wants to grab something like a like you know, something basically like a. You need a ball. Yeah, this is, this is, you need a ball. 
You basically uh, need a ball. Hmm. He wants to play ball, but in a kind <laughs> of like... a stick. Can I find a stick and like? Yeah, sure. There's there's a few like pieces of like um, kindling and stuff, like sticks for t- kindling, and a little box like you see next to you. And there's a good one that looks like a good mouth size, like a good throwable mouth size. So you I want to go little... outside and play fetch with the dog. All right, cool. Um, I'm not going to like roll for this because it's crazy. Um, but you can go outside. You go outside of the stable, which puts you sort of over here-ish, I believe. And you start playing um, catch with the dog. Uh, you actually see um, Bondo and Ratty, who are over here. And they've just come from somewhere. And they started talking to a couple of people who are being marched into town by a whole bunch of dwarves. And you stop and you... Wait, so you don't know who they are, actually. Yeah. So they, they've stopped and they've started talking to a whole bunch of dwarves who are flanking two guys who are holding hands. So there's about like four dwarves like this, and they're sort of flanking um, these two people over here. One is a very beautiful human. I mean, even you think he's beautiful, with long, luscious hair and a very like fine shirt. He's got a, a, a mandolin over his back. And next to him is this sort of like buck tooth, um, very long with enormous feet, uh, human. And they're holding hands, and they're just sort of standing there looking a bit like pissed off and not very happy. They're still trying to talk. Like, one of them's got a very thick, um, what sounds like a kind of like uh, Marienburg or maybe even like a weird Albion accent. He's talking like this, going, Of course, we, of course, we bloody know who Ratty is. Go and find him. And at that point, Ratty and Bondo uh, have come out and are now talking to the two guys. The dwarves sort of relax back a little bit. And one of them comes up to Bondo, and they start talking that weird uh, dwarvish, um, like, like that, which of course to them sounds like, terribly sorry, old boy, do you know these two ruffians? Um, Because that's what dwarvish sounds like to dwarves and gnomes. Um, And they sort of eventually, the dwarves like peel off and go back to their stations, uh, because they they look like they're taking a point around the village. And these two humans sort of like shake hands with Ratty and Bondo, and they walk off to uh, the center of the town. Um, at which point Bondo and Ratty also follow. Um, yep, yeah, that's what happens. You're still I imagine French. I'm horribly confused on what I'm seeing. Yeah, you'll see chicken uh, on top of Ratty for no reason like that. That doesn't surprise me. Look at that. Uh. Look at that shot. Look at this. Doesn't surprise you. Look at that shot. Man, not even planned. Dude. Force is strong with me and I'm strong with a forcer. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, Del, so you're confused but don't care. Um, you do see the Widow LaRue, who is still sort of up this corner of her, there's a very nice kind of like porch area in front of her house. Um, she seems to have like a couple of bottles of open brandy, one of which seems to be drunk. She's sitting on what looks like a, kind of like a swing, um, like a swing chair thing. And um, she is pouring herself literally another glass, like almost like having finished the first one, pour, immediately pouring another one. And she's just sort of staring out to the north over the river, um, this direction, where the two dwarves are flanking this bridge, by the way, but she seems to be staring out at almost nothing. Um, you don't know what to do, really, but it's a bit awkward. She doesn't see you, but you see her. I get the sense that she's like, <coughs> sad. Yeah, well, you did find the half-rendered corpse yeah. of her son some time ago, you know? After the aborted attempt that Ziggy made at sleeping with her, so you know, it's not a great day. Um, what do you want to do? <laughs> You've still got Fleck in hand now. He's still sort of with Fleck. Um, I would. I want to approach her, and uh, okay, like does she? Okay, I would like to approach her and just kind of give condolences and and see how she's doing, and sure. as if you, there's anything I can do. As you do so, like, the dog sort of sees something back in the stables and darts back into the stables real quick. Um, but yeah, you can approach her as well, if you want. Oh. Uh, well, no, I'm going to be worried about my dog. <laughs> so you're about to pay so. the human condolences, showing a lot of love and relief to a person in need, and then you just turn around because your dog left. Okay, cool. Fair enough. <laughs> so you head, <laughs> you head back to the stable. Wow, you are you are officially a vagabond. <laughs> so, it's the thought that counts. It's, it's the, the thought that counts. That counts. So you see, <laughs> I was gonna. You see the dog. The dog sort of like goes to the ladder and dives up and just goes straight to your bed. He grabs something out of the out of the um, the straw and then just like shuffles back and then just head to, hurls it and it just lands right next to Ziggy like this and it's the scimitar that you half inched from that skeleton. Zig- Zygmunt does a combat roll for no reason, goes, danger, ha, my combat reflexes are second to none. Nice try, doggo, 
Next time, I'll take your tail off. And then he just, he just does something. He just like charges this thing and starts hacking at it with a sword. You do notice that this, you've never really fully seen his potential because inexplicably you're always looking the other way. But he does look like he knows how to handle a sword properly. And he's sort of doing these like little cuts and right. nice pirouettes and things like that. The doggy comes back to you and just starts licking your hand and then looks at the sword like, let's play fetch with that kind of motion. Right. Uh, so I kind of roll, my, I want to roll my eyes at Ziggy yep. and just lean down, grab the scimitar, and I'm kind of side-eyeing Ziggy, looking at the scimitar, and I know, I'm an archer, I'm an, I've never really handled a scimitar before in my yep. life, but yep. I know it's wicked cool, it's yep. encrusted with some jewels, it looks wicked badass. It looks like that scimitar wanna, that Morgan um, Freeman has <laughs> in Robin Hood, the Prince of Thieves, it's like that. It's nice. badassery. <laughs> it looks wicked. But I, I know I can't really, I don't really know what to do with it, and I don't want to hurt myself, or especially okay. any any of the vagabonds so i kind of reluctantly approach ziggy i'm like <laughs> so uh i kind of <laughs> you you know a thing or two about two-handed weapons he looks like right? this yeah Fräulein. i do and with that he just sort of flicks his sword and just throws it left and it just stabs straight into the wall <laughs> and just goes boing, boing, boing. and he steps forward and he steps forward to the scimitar and completely unnecessarily puts his foot underneath the hilt and just flicks it up and catches it in his hand like a real douchebag. And then he just takes a Get few. Yeah. <laughs> he just takes a few swipes and goes, "So, the little elf lady wants to play, huh? Cool. <laughs> I can teach you. Come this way. Um, so you're gonna let him teach you, like how to use the scimitar thing? Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna reluctantly. Oh, what's, what's that? up, Tom? I just think that's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I reluctantly just kind of take a deep sigh because I need. Sometimes you need to humble yourself, right? Okay. And uh, say, look, I really want to help our our squad here, and I really feel like I could be somewhat but adept at a, a two handed weapon, and I would like you t to help me if you are willing uh, to become adept as possible with the scimitar okay and i say it like which is like it's like painful <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. gritted teeth Saying all the it. way okay he looks he sort of looks at you and like he rolls up your sleeve on your left arm and just starts prodding like with his finger your muscle your bicep and goes yeah okay so let's see if you can hold it yeah and he just sort of hands it to you and then he he starts like you know, with your permission kind of thing. He starts pushing your arms in different positions and he starts going, right, this is eins. And he starts holding it like in front of you and he starts moving your arms. It's quite pain, it is quite heavy. What is your strength, just out of curiosity? Um, my strength is four. Okay, fine, but you actually, he, it looks heavy. You, sh you shake not because you're, you're weak, just because it's really cumbersome. But eventually you sort of realize how to hold it because he's actually very, he's a very good teacher. This is taking, by the way, about a good five, six, seven hours. So he's sort of like positioning your hands. He shows you like eins, uh, what is it? Eins, drei, eins, zwei, drei, uh, vier, fünf, like five different positions, which he calls out in using uh, empire speak uh, into these five different positions. And, he, and then he also shows you blocking for eins, zwei, uh, drei, uh, vier, fünf of blocking positions. And eventually he starts like getting you to start attacking and hitting this like mock-up thing that he's made, this sort of like target. And after a while, you sort of get into it, which is kind of cool. And you sort of start realizing that this scimitar is actually pretty fluid. Now, you're not going to be like super person at this thing because you literally just picked it up and started showing you stuff. But I'm going to allow you to spend the XP and take like a kind of half proficiency with this thing. Okay. So it should be a two-handed sword, but we're going to treat it like a bastard sword. So it's so if you put on your character sheet minus 10 initiative, so when you wield it, you have a slight penalty because it is heavy and it is a little cumbersome. It's not like a short sword. But then if you hit, you get plus one damage. And eventually in a few weeks of practice, we're going to take another test and you have to spend more experience points, I'm going to say. And then if you get that, then you can become fully proficient at using it, in which case you get plus two damage. Yep, that's fair. Yay! Yeah, you cool with that? <laughs> I'm cool with that. All right, so making the rules what I want. Uh, that's the GM way. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so take 100 experience points off. Uh, I'm going to give you a test in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, okay. <laughs> this is the training dummy. That's a very nice picture of the training dummy, whoever did that. I'm pretty sure it's Jim, right? That's me. Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> okay, that's very cool. We're going to call him a name. What should we call him? We should call him something. Dave. 
Dave, right? Dave, the the training <laughs> dummy. The training dummy. Cool. That's Dave, right? Dave. Well, I don't know if he's going to last. He's a <laughs> beloved character after all, but maybe he's, he's going to be the first one to die. All right. So, okay, cool. So that's what you I spend. Hope Dave gets blown up in the bombardment. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. All right. No, Dave. No. So that takes you most of the day, I would say, to the evening time, towards night time, actually. Um, you sort of step out. You're a little sweaty, but you sort of feel good. The scimitar feels good in your hand, and Ziggy's like buggered off to go and do whatever the hell he's going to do. Um, you haven't had chance to sort of replenish anything that you might need. But now you kind of think might be a good time to go and, you know, talk to the villagers. Um, it's, it's been probably a good 12 hours in total. And you washed up a little bit as well. And, you know, you, got, you ate something, obviously, and all that kind of stuff. So you've got a little time. You've got all your equipment with you because, you know, you haven't got a huge amount anyway. And you sort of saunter back into the village. Uh, as you step out, you see Widow LaRue, who's pretty much looking quite worse for wear. who's just, like, pretty much hanging. She looks at you and just, like, raises her head very, very slowly. And then just sort of, like, turns back to the north. Uh, you do see that the other people are sort of milling and they're all talking. And um, you do see that down the road, uh, Mabel, this, well, this chicken thing that was on his head is like clucking, is strutting and clucking through the town alone and isolated. Uh, you see the two uh, men that joined uh, earlier, whom you don't know, but seem to know Ratty and Bondo. They're chatting with the other townsfolk over here. And down the road, because you have keen elf sight, you see Bondo and Ratty returning. Um, the chicken is really strutting, and like it's, it knows how to walk. You know, it's she's ha- a happy chicken because she got to sit, sit on Ratigan's head. Yeah, this chicken is more than the chicken seems. It's like me. cock of the walk and all that kind of stuff. In fact, it's it's, it's clucking in a, in a kind of rhythmic sense. Telling all the chicken friends how happy she is that she's found a head she can finally sit on. And then what happens, Neil? Staying chicken alive. There you go. That's what it's doing. It's just strutting, (laughs) strutting through the town. Um, So yeah, what do you want to do, Del? Um, Ziggy's sort of like, for some reason, Ziggy's come out of the stable and is now taking a bananaing movement around, away from Widow Laroon, and is just putting his hand to his head, like on the right side of his cheek. And it's sort of taking this very wide, unnecessarily wide walk around the stables. You are about here. This is like a kind of a well for the um, for the village, just over here, where you are. And the chicken is over here, <laughs> very important. And <laughs> the other people you see over here, including that elf Charlia and the other people that you saw earlier um, at the party, if you remember any of that. Uh, the two guys, our two vagabonds, are walking down uh, this stretch over here. What do you want to do, Del? I want to greet. How far away are they? I would want to greet my dudes and see where the heck they've been for yeah, six hours. Yeah, about fifty yards or something like that. So, um, yeah, you can walk down. So you you gotta go. Uh, do you have a little like whistle or a little command for for Fleck? Yeah, we we said it was a whistle. Okay, so, so. can we hear the whistle? <laughs> Wait, like okay, it's can gonna you, be. Can you whistle? You can't whistle. Oh, you can. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good whistle. You can whistle. All right. Cool. Nice. It's one of those ones. It's, and yeah. To the point where the chicken sort of turns around and goes Bark, like that and then just carries on strutting. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So you're walking down now with this enormously oversized model of a dog. Um, you also see Mary, Marie Louise Butterford, who's also come out of one of the houses carrying like a bundle of something, like a sack of something. And she sort of waves to you and sort of falls into step. Ziggy is also sort of seeming reluctantly. Well, he's, like, he's sort of going this way because I think he doesn't want to go the other way. Uh, but he's sort of near you as well. And you see the boys, um, and Ratty sort of like holds up a hand. And then Ratty spies the chicken in yonder, who's like going, buck, 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 buck. and he just sort of nudges Bondo and points. And as he points, from behind you, you hear this, <laughs> and the entire world behind you explodes. Um, please make a strength test. Who? You. And that strength, which is your strength of four times ten to make it percentile, which is 40, you need to get that or underneath. 55. Okay. The blast from the explosion knocks you down oh. off your feet. No damage, but it knocks you to the ground. And the dog sort of gets like little knocks and just starts running. Ziggy goes flying and actually smacks into a barrel and collapses as well. Uh, <laughs> Mary Lou- <laughs> Yeah, you start laughing <laughs> involuntarily. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and yeah, this is huge explosion has just happened behind you. Okay, uh, Ratty and Bondo, we are back up to speed of where we were at the beginning of the adventure. 
<laughs> it's on. Uh, Ratty, you're up next, sir. So basically, me for the next, like, five seconds, it's just like... <laughs> no! <laughs> Tom, I lost you there, Vic. Did you not hear me doing the Mabel No thing? No, we just hear you go, no, and then just cut off completely. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know what's going on. So, sorry. The, no. I think it's grief, um, isn't it? <laughs> your ping yeah. went right way up. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm going to run um, straight towards... Rat <coughs> You're running straight towards Mabel? He is running straight towards the crater guy. The smoking crater where Mabel was. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So you're just going to run full pelt. So you just break into this mad run uh, straight down the path. No. Is there other? Are we hearing other? Um, like bomb. Like, is there more whistling sounds? Are there more bombs coming? Or is? Um, is I, that just, are you? Was, was it just a test? Shot? I'm gonna. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna make you. Let, I'm gonna make you make a cool test for this. I want to see okay. how far gone you've gone with this shock of the exploding chicken that you've fallen in love with somehow. You're such a bastard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you set it up. Let's do it. <laughs> What's your call, please, sir? 84 is a failure. <laughs> well, that's, that's going to be a fail, isn't it? That's going to be a massive fail, 84 out of 100. Okay, so you basically just go, no! You immediately start crying and like this dribble out your nose immediately. It's like a tap. And you start running towards it. You have no idea. The world has sort of gone very tumult effect and very muted. Uh, you're sort of aware of... Yeah. You're aware of other sounds. Just a lot of not... Yeah. Yeah. So you're aware of other sounds and things, but you're not really aware of what's happening. All you want to do is get to the crater that used to be that chicken. Um, so you're just running full tilt. Um, Bondo, what are you up to, sir? Ah, well, Bondo's heard explosions, and Bondo doesn't like explosions, and Bondo... That was a big one as well. You big. you actually do have you do have um, bombs, don't you? Specialist yes, weapon. Indeed. That was a very yeah. big bomb. I know so. my... Yeah. That was a very big uh, missile. That was a big bomb. Yeah. And also, clearly, came in from a decent distance away, judging by the... the the sound or that's on it's I, I know you've so, lost your memory in the game but there's a memory a stark memory comes back you suddenly have this flash image of a trebuchet throwing what what was basically um, kind of like an immolation device that explodes in the air just above and then rains down fire you just have a flash image you have no idea where that came from in your past probably that you can't remember but you remember how to make it how to operate it and how it and essentially how it all works. You completely remember everything about it, but you have no other information apart from that. Just FYI, it's like a little flash coming into you. Cool. Right. Well, I'm going to try and run in the general direction of, but also because Mary Louise Butterford's over there, yeah, and also the rest of the party. Yeah. So I'm going to try and get everybody into cover behind something, okay. whatever. So you start calling out. The dwarves, by the way, are in sh they were all in shock as well. They didn't like expect that. They're all stunned. And some of them, like one of them, is breaking. Like has dropped his gun. Is picking it up. Another one has been knocked kind of into the river actually, and it's just on the edge of the river here. You do see a villager that's been knocked over as well. Uh, you have no idea what's happened to uh, the widow Larue. You don't know what's happening over here, folks. But you hear like a lot of sounds. Bondo, you can also hear this uh, coming from uh, the northeast. Uh, and presumably there are more of these things on their way. Right. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so you're running towards... It's a bombardment. Find some cover, you lot. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Switching... So I'm shouting at them. Nice oh, one. No shouting to the dwarves. Hold fast, chaps. Hold fast. <laughs> I say, spot we of... We have incoming. Spot of, spot of explosions, what, what? Yes. <laughs> what, what? Some lighters throwing as ordnance at us. <laughs> Incoming. <laughs> All right. So you start shouting that. You see the dog is now sort of running, like, like sort of, like, running, is really freaked out. Um, and then sort of stops and sort of turns back and starts running towards what you can see the elf is on the floor uh, next to uh, Ziggy, who's been smashed into uh, some barrels by this, this <laughs> building there. Uh, so I think she's in hysterics. She seems to be laughing. Del, it's your go. You're still laughing. You failed your laughing check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you want to do? So I, I just was knocked down. I'm yeah. not. You're not I'm down. Not you're not hurt. injured. You've just been literally lifted off your feet and slapped to the ground. But you're not actually not right. injured or anything. You just, it's just you lost I, your I stand up. 
Yeah. And I check Fleck. I'm like, come here, boy. Fleck is sort of over here running in circles, and he hears your voice, and that's when he stops, turns, and starts darting back to you. But he's like really shaking. Um, yeah. He's like wobbly. Um, yeah. You're a big scary war dog, aren't you, buddy? Uh. <laughs> At that point, you do see Ziggy. Uh, they really don't. Um, well, he's a war dog, though, so he's actually trained to be okay with loud bangs, but that was a really loud bang. Um, so you do see Ratty, who's now flying, um, like, a uh, bathrobe flying asunder and is just thundering past you. You think he's coming to see if you're okay, and then he just runs past you, and you have no idea what he's doing. He's running towards the source of the bombardment, which is nuts, but there you go. What do you want to do, Del? You're on the floor currently. What's that? You're on the floor currently. What do you want to do? Yeah, I want to I wanna stand up. <laughs> okay. You do, you also you've got uh, acute hearing, or you've got very good hearing. You also hear this What? That's what you hear. I didn't hear it. Sorry, your mic didn't pick it up. Oh, really? Shit. <laughs> yeah, it cut out. But it's, I'm guessing it's the, whist the whistling. I bet, is, is it like Saving Private Ryan moment? Yeah, it's exactly that moment. Got it, okay. Yeah. Like ear ringing, tinnitus, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah. Um, all right, well, that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah got it. Um, okay, so I, I try and check it off. I try and calm the dog um, as I'm standing up. I, I want to help Ziggy. I want to help Ziggy up to his feet. Ziggy's I'll, been I'll smashed. That. He's literally upside down against these barrels that have exploded under his weight. Um, and he's sort of covered in flour and like whatever else was in these things like rice and stuff And he's just like upside down with his legs sort of in the air. He's like head and arms like on the floor But he doesn't see he's, he's moving. He's like he's like oh my god like that He's rolling, but he's definitely like being blasted off his feet into the wall Which is pretty heavy this blast was exceptionally strong and you weren't right. you're not that close to the crater a good 15 20 yards away um, But it's still that fucking big this thing you if you want to have a quick look by the way you can yeah, I, I scan the area. <laughs> All right, so you sort, of, you sort of do a turn uh, around and you see everything, everything in this area, this circle, um, essentially has been like a damaged, burnt, exploded or burnt. So this house is like literally like the corner of, the corner of it has been blown apart. Uh, the well has been damaged and has collapsed in on itself like this. Um, the chicken is n surprisingly nowhere to be seen. Um, but you do, actually that's not true, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can't see where the chicken is, and there's a big, great, massive, dirty hole where the chicken was standing. Um, you hear screaming as well now, the people of the, the people of the, um, of the village are now starting to scream and panic and run, and they're freaking out completely. Is there fire? Is there smoke? This building here is actually now on fire, yeah. Okay. Uh, do I see anybody else injured or just Ziggy on the ground? Uh, you're like, too far away at the moment to see. There's nobody. Thankfully, okay. it doesn't look like there was anybody close. Just some useless chicken. Um, that was going to probably be eaten <laughs> at some point. Um, so apart from that chicken, um, nothing else seems to be like... like It's just building damage and freaking out, basically. It could have been a lot worse. However, you do hear these whistling sounds coming from up high. I, I, instinctively, what I would do in real life is I would look up. Uh, okay. to see like what, like if something dropped. Um, make an initiative test plus, you have excellent vision, don't you? So plus 20, I'm gonna yeah. say. So what's your initiative? 69 plus 20, that's 89, uh, to try and spy whatever the hell is coming in. Big money, uh, big money. Six, 65, big money. Okay, so you, with your excellent vision, you, you, first you sort of scan, you, you know the direction to scan in more or less, and actually what you see are three objects in the air uh, from a hill which is quite far back, a good few hundred yards on this uh, over here, let's say. Let's just draw there. And you see these sort of like three objects. One is sort of heading towards the stables. One is heading possibly higher in, over this way. One of them is definitely heading this direction. But they're all pretty high at the moment. But they are starting to fall in a parabolic arc. Okay. This one is, this. the one here is lower than any other. The one on the right is lower than any of those. And it does look like it's about to hit the, like, the stables and... Uh, Widow LaRue's Oh place. my god, what? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, I know time works differently. In, it's six seconds um, around, folks. Yeah, I really don't, I have six seconds to like, <laughs> so I see something. that, so I see Ziggy. So I, okay, in six seconds I stand up, yeah. call the dog, look yeah. at Ziggy, yeah. look up, yeah. see these things. That's probably what, three seconds, four seconds? There's about three seconds, um, so yeah. Can I get Radigan's attention and call him back? Uh, and yep. point. You can try and do that. He's now running towards the crater. But yeah, yeah. I, I want to yell, Ratty! And then snap my fingers and 
to start frantically pointing to this the, is a, to this what's is a, in the air. a weird one, but because he's sort of like under like this sort of shock moment, you can make a leadership test against Ratty. So whatever okay. your leadership is, a straight leadership test just to get to help him snap out of it. Okay. Leadership is thirty-two. Okay. Thirty-seven, not quite. Okay, sorry, but <laughs> uh, you don't have luck or anything useful like that, do you? Uh, we never talked about. I have no, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. If we, it's I not in your character sheet, then you don't have it, buddy. Uh, then no. Under your skills. It's a skill. Under yeah. your skills. No, no, no. I don't have it. Thank goodness for that. Okay, so Ratty is still running towards the source of explosion. Good. Um, did I say good out loud? I mean, oh no. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. So, so you scream that out and Ratty just is running past. He doesn't seem to hear you. The Widow LaRue has stood up and is now walking towards the corner of her porch. And that's your oh round. Uh, and you can do one more thing, but you can't do much with it. So you can do one more thing. You've got like a second left or something. Uh, I, I mean, what I would do is I would shield the dog. If the dog is next to me, I would... Yeah. And I couldn't do anything, I would shield the All dog. Alright, so you sort of drop to a knee and pull the dog in and you sort of start shielding the dog. Um, yes. You hear very quickly on Ziggy's round, who's like now rolled out onto the floor and is back on his feet, he goes, Oh, that's right, save the fucking dog! <laughs> like, <laughs> at that point you hear another, <laughs> ba-boom! Okay, I'm going to hold it there for a second. Uh, Ratty, you are now running past, uh, you hear Dels scream something at you, but you have no idea uh, what she's saying. All you want to do is get to that crater, uh, which you do. I but think also screaming Mabel no in my head. <coughs> yeah, you, can, you can scream it out yeah. loud if you want. <laughs> you can go for a scream, so it's, it's therapeutic. Especially well, after seeing this violence. <laughs> All right, so you basically get to the center and you see where Mabel what Mabel's sort of there still. And Mabel's sort of like, what? Mabel clucks out of the center of this crater. Except that, like, Mabel's neck is at a really weird angle. Her feathers have all been, oh. like, shorn off apart from, like, her tail feather and her head, uh, the, the feathers Mabel, around her head. Um, is she still alive? One of, her, one of her wings is ripped off and one of her feet is now missing everything but one toe. And she's sort of stumbling around and she just comes towards you and goes, buck, 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 buck. and then she just claps. She looks at you and goes, buck, and then she just literally like collapses in front of you at your feet. And she just, oh, she's amazing. now a, very much a dead chicken, but a tasty <laughs> looking thing. She's partly cooked. Like her breasts are pretty pretty cooked, and the the oh. heady smell of wonderful cooked char char grilled barbecue chicken hits your senses. You're such a <laughs> tender, oh. juicy, tender, and it's really cooked. Where like you know like that tender stuff, like it's just moist. You know that kind of like moistness, that moist factor oh. that you're always trying to get for people that eat chicken. It's like that, and it smells That's great. Awesome, you're a vegetarian though. I know that. I know your character is actually vegetarian. I know this, but it does smell good. It does smell good. She smells great. <laughs> what do you want to do, Tom? Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick, pick my my lovely dead chicken hat up, my hat chicken, um, and um, I don't know. I'm gonna give her a cuddle and and just her eyeball. Know, you that... squeeze her eyeball out like this, and just like lands on oh. the floor. But she's still got one eyeball. Oh. But one of the eyeballs like gets popped out. Oh, oh my god, this is twisted. <laughs> Dude. Maple um, live. You haven't well, got time for a proper burial, Tom. Sorry about that, mate. I, I well. have animal care. Can I help? <laughs> <laughs> I've got animal care as well. You do oh, have animal care. And, and you know, powers combined. You, you, know that, you know this animal is past caring. <laughs> That's what you know for your animal care. <laughs> what do you want to do, Tom? Oh, by the way, to go with it, you know. Tom, you sort of snapped out, and you do hear this <laughs> from coming from the same doing direction. That and it Does it tweak out? Really? <laughs> That's. Such... I tell you what. Yeah, give, you work out, work out what you're going to do, Tom. I'm just going to get my phone so if we can get like a whistling noise or something. <clears throat> so Neil's away, just doing foley sounds for the bombs dropping. Um... Hey, sorry. <laughs> He's All asking right. Siri. Where are you? Siri. Down there. Okay. Siri, have you got any, have you got any ordinance? Have you got any... Uh, you know, ordinance. I'm talking about ordinance sound. stuff. Yeah. Try, and, Jimmy, I mean, try and get one for us, will you? If this isn't getting tagged by Two the seconds. FBI, I don't know what will. Well, really. it's a fictional chicken, mate. It's fine. Neil, did a chicken do something to you in the past life? No, at all. <laughs> chickens are great. I mean, they're super tasty, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. I think chickens are great. They're wonderful things. Um, so, any particular thoughts, Tom? Because I was away for a second. 
Well, I mean, I'm kind of in shock and mourning my my dead chicken, hat yep. chicken friend. Yep. So um, I'm kind of just wandering around. Oh, you're doing that whole Saving Private Ryan, but as opposed to an arm, you're picking up a dead chicken. Like doing that, like yeah, picking up, I'm standing up, picking up again kind of moment and then wandering towards Bell. Yeah. Cool, nice. Very cinematic, loving it. Uh, okay, next up is Bondo. Uh, you get to Mary Louise. She's She was blown off her feet, but she managed to stagger up. Uh, she's pretty tough, as you know. And she sort of looks to you and she sort of runs towards you as you're running to her and she takes your arm and says, I, uh, um, what the hell was that? Um. <laughs> I forgot oh. that you, that's how you do Mary Louise. Well, you it's made really me. Good. I <sighs> got myself into a corner with her. Um, that sounded like ordinance. Anyway. Mm. She says that out loud. Is that a bomb? Is that a bomb? Oh, we got it coming. Some buggers got a, got a trebuchet up there and they're flinging mm. some kind of incendiary device. Mm. Feels more like a catapult to me than a trebuchet. Mm. Look at the parabolic art. Something in your heart just skips a beat, Bondo. And she starts talking to you in battle yeah. tongue about like the precision. And, and she's, she's already identified roughly where it comes from. Uh, this chick is seriously hot, dude. Don't blow it. Yeah. Don't ziggy. Don't be a ziggy. Yeah. No, don't, be a yeah ziggy. No, don't be a ziggy. Totally fuzzy the edges of the camera shot there. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And she starts talking about the parabolic art. Oh, she's really fucking clever, man, as well. Like, you know, she she talks like a you know a bit of a fun, she funny talks, but she's actually pretty clever. Um. So yes. Uh. What do you want to do, Bondo? Mary Louise Butterfoot is safe. Um. You do see Ratty screaming. And he's just sort of like wandering back. He does this thing where he like drops down and picks something up and drops it and picks it up again and starts wandering like he's drunk almost towards Dell. It doesn't look good. Right. <coughs> okay. I've seen. Well, I I haven't seen this before, but it triggers some sort of memory. I go huffing it over there. Actually, can you make a cool test, one, please? Get him out of fire. Yeah. Can you make two, a cool? Can you make a cool test? And down. Well, yeah. yeah it's a man make, down thing. Please make a cool test, actually. I can. Let me see. Cool is thirty-one. Nope. Okay. Yep. Two seconds. Uh, this does actually trigger something in you. Yep. Thirty-nine. With luck, you will pass. Oh. And I really with recommend. With luck, this. I can pass. Yes, yeah, I recommend it. It's a new day. I had to use luck on that one. Yep. Yeah. So you use luck. Your luck holds. You sort of get this flash of memory, but you bury it almost immediately because you you sort of feel that going into that memory would be very problematic right now. Um, but it does remind you of something quite horrific it is quite a weirdly horrific even though it's just a chicken etc but anyway you sort of look bury it to the side and you manage to grab ziggy uh, sorry grab ratty and you sort of pull your gang together and all of you are sort of like together now a villager stands up and is sort of like completely freaking out and screaming uh ratty is just very quiet and all of you sort of form this huddle together um as you sort of do that um the ordinance rains down you see widow larue anybody that's looking this way she sort of steps out from her porch yard and turns to look at this kind of screaming, but she's very drunk. You notice that she's wobbling. And she just turns, and this ordinance hits dead center in between the stables and also uh, her, her house and just explodes. And her body just goes flying up and back. And she just literally just pinwheels out of sight or into the towards oh the river. And you don't even know what happens to her. She just disappears. Like just gets, this explosion literally. Then also, you hear this kind of ah as this ordinance comes down towards the ground. Please, Dell, can you make an initiative test? So you, 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 you're the keenest sight and you have the highest initiative. All right. Yeah. Um, no, straight, straight initiative though. No modifier, please. This is I just rolled. Yeah. 69. Huh? I have a 69. You rolled, this is your roll, 42. My roll. Yeah, oh, cool. Okay. So um, you see, you, you sort of have to blink and you can't quite believe it, but you, you're pretty sure that this, whatever this ordinance is, was actually like a flaming, screaming skull. Like, you have no fucking clue what that was, but it looked like a flaming oh, skull wonder, screaming down. I wonder who could be firing at us. <laughs> did, you, did you, like, take some money off somebody? <laughs> it's the Salvation Army. It's the Salvation Army. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, everybody, everybody now, please make a cool test. Oh. Another oh. one. Jeez. Uh, with the exception of, with the exception of Tom, everybody else, please make a cool test. Oh. Yeah. Uh, anybody else that's made a cool oh, test doesn't. Job, actually, no. anybody that's made a cool test doesn't have to, but anybody that needs to make a cool test, please do so now. So that's a pass for Dell. Yeah, you saw it. It's yeah. fine. Well, You've, I, well, I did make a. I did pass one. But you passed one. I'm going to take one? the first one you did. That's fine. And Tom, you've Thank already you. passed one. You <laughs> failed yours already, but that's okay. You've already in the grip of it. Um, Blobbing Jack holding it. Yeah. 
half cooked chicken. Okay, you so know? so you you lot managed to sort of keep your collective cool. For, or Tom's freaking out already, but not for the the reasons that other people might. Um, some of the villagers start um, freaking out as well, um, and some of them are actually sort of like start ducking cover and actually seem to have the sense. You see, actually, one villager who goes, who's sort of like over here, runs past you, and as he as he sees all of you, goes. What are you doing? Get to cover! And he runs into this building here, and as he does so, ordnance lands straight on top of it and just blows the fuck out of it. And it just literally explodes. Um, you hear screaming across um, from uh, the village over here. You also see in the corner, you pretty sure you see Dasher um, pulling... Um, sorry, not pulling. Um, you see um, Wavy Davy pulling Dasher back because Dasher was about to try and help somebody who then got caught in this blast. You're pretty sure they disappear behind the explosion, I guess, over here. And you see Hector Brioche and the others, and some of the dwarves are now running. You also see that some of the dwarves who are now um, over here, they, they were trying to come back over the bridge, but then now they've turned and, and stopped and are now holding fast at the position right there. Um, yeah, um, you won't see all this stuff. It doesn't make a difference. Anyway, okay, cool. So, Dell, it's now your go. And you hear this sort of, yeah, that's the sort of, the explosions happened, the flames happened, and the smoke is now quite heavy and heady, and the burnings that have been hit are definitely on fire. People are screaming. Uh, you, f you group, your group seems to be, you know, in relative safety, but how long you can't say. The dwarves are trying to move into action. One dwarf over here is trying to fish out this dwarf that's struggling in the water. Uh, the other dwarves are sort of like coming towards here. Um, the blacksmith is coming out as well from his area over there. Dell, it's now your round, I would say, collectively. So when I looked up in the sky, I saw three, right? <coughs> you saw three, three and then three of them hit, yeah. One, Do I see two, anything and else then... incoming? Or was mm, that it? Right now, you don't. Okay, so I feel like I would I would know that. I saw three, I ducked and covered, three hit. Yeah. Um, you didn't so see I, I mean, I would... You didn't see anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I, I want to say, I do want to help Ziggy get to his feet. My first thought is to help wounded yeah ziggy's already on his feet by the way oh okay okay but he's also now um, switched into like combat mode and he doesn't seem he doesn't seem to like care whether you didn't help him or didn't get to him or blah 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 um but i don't see like any enemy types like this was just bombs right you, you just saw like yeah explosions and things um all right i want to shout to ziggy and motion to like move forward and see where ratty is <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, uh, Ratty's been brought towards you by Bondo at this point, and you, all yeah. of you, you, all of you lot, are just sort of like there together. And I, I want to tell them what I saw. That there were three in the distance. I point what you I can saw. Do it, you guys can do it in um in ro in role plays. So you can do it narratively to each other right now as as your characters. You have a bit of time. Okay, I would tell them that. <laughs> yeah, so, do it. yeah, go. Okay, first thing. Uh, are you guys okay? What is going on? We've been bombarded. Um, Somebody yes. Like us. Um, yes. Um, Neil, when I can I, I there's something I want to try. Yeah, mate. For maybe you've snapped out of this, by the way, at the moment. But yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't know what it will do. Actually, it's a bit of a risk. Okay, what do you want to try, mate? The blessing that Tal gave me. I'm wondering if that will do anything to bring it back. Uh, you can try it if you want. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to need to know where your willpower, because this is one of those roles I need you to not know the role. So what's your willpower, please? 37. Okay. Okay, so that is... Okay, that's that. Okay. Cool. Okay, so you're gonna okay, you're gonna try this, right? You've got full magic points. Um, hold the body of the chicken in front of you, and you're gonna yeah. recite. You, that's your instinct, and you're gonna recite the words of Tal. Um, and I put, uh, yeah, and I put a, the other hand over her. <clears throat> okay. Um, and I think about that moment that I was in the void. Yeah. And um, I met. Gary and he told me that I was like an emissary of of Tal. Oh yeah, okay. Um, and basically, I say, you know, Tal, if you are out there, bring bring this chicken back to me. 
<laughs> this... I'm just like, uh, <laughs> like confused. Me. All right, you do so. Uh, if you care for if you care for all the creatures in nature. You bring the cat chicken back. <laughs> all right, mate. So you do that. Um, okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> all right, this is going to cost you four magic points. Um, I think it was three. No, it's going to be three. Th this, uh, yeah, it's three for. Three for the word of Toll, that's correct. This is going to cost you four magic points, Tom. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you do so, you sort of, you place... It's like half my magic points. Yeah, you've just halved your magic points. Uh, when, you, when you sort of say this, you feel something very different to the last time that you said these words and had this effect. And then you just, your hands sort of like start shaking and your body feels really weird, like there's something like crawling through it. And it just feels really weird and uncomfortable, like it's in your shoulders and then in your neck, and then it snakes down into both of your hands that are holding this chicken. And it just, it feels like you've got suddenly darts coming out of your hands and pierces the body of this chicken, but you don't see anything. But that's what it feels like. And you throw your head back almost convulsively, and you just utter these words, and then you drop the chicken, and you just stagger back, and you, take an, you feel like you, half of your strength has just left you, because it actually has. Uh, four magic points off. Uh, this chicken hits the ground, like, and just slaps on the ground. You, you stumble back onto your, into your, into your, um, onto your ass, basically. Um, everybody else that sees this kind of takes an involuntary half step back. Like, it was like, what the fuck was that kind of thing? And um, this chicken is just lying on the ground in front of you, um, just like the still corpse of this chicken. What do you want to do, sir? I don't want to do, Jesus! I just did it. Are we gonna have um, a zombie chicken? <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna I'll, I'll give the chicken CPR if there's this All right, is where we so, go. So you, you rush over to the chicken and immediately you start mean, you start you start like tapping its tender tendered breasts that are now like perfectly cooked, and you start opening its little half beak thing, and then you just start like blowing air into it. And at one point, yeah. it's like its, its stomach starts expanding, its chest starts expanding, and then it just hears, bark, bark, bark. and then just like you, you rear back, and this chicken just bolts upright, and it just looks at you and just like stagger. Its head is now lolling left and right, like it can't hold its head up properly, but it's sort of upright and moving, and it starts like bashing into things and starts running around in circles, and then it just suddenly stops, and it turns really weirdly like that, and it just takes goes. Bark, 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 bark. And just stops towards you, and just put, flops its head on your feet, and just and then just sits down. You notice its oh, eyes yeah. are, are weirdly like kind of bluish, like misty blue, and it's got a little bit of smoke coming out of its mouth. <laughs> but it's it's very much seemingly animated. Yeah. I'm actually going a little bit mad here right now. <laughs> I feel like insane. Um, it also sort okay. of, it's sort of now like it's starting to claw at you, like it's like you know want something, like it starts like claw, at you. like you know how pets do and they want something like kittens do and shit. It's like little claw just onto your onto your foot. Can you lift him up and put him back on my head, please. You do so, and he sort of flops around, and you have to sort of adjust the weight because his head flops left and right all uncontrollably. Oh God. But eventually, just sort of settles and just like <laughs> like that, and its feet are now like sort of either side of your head, so it's kind of like um. What are those things that call the deer hunter things where the, the, the flaps come down I mean, over your like, head? Yeah. It's, not like, yeah, it's sort of like a yeah, chicken like deer, deer hunter. Stalker, yeah. yeah. It's like that. Deer stalker head? A deer stalker, yeah. that's it. It's like a deer, deer, it's stalker. Like a deer stalker. It's only got one foot, so it's like this. Hi. Like that. With any, that looks like a duck, but you get the I idea. I can't do a chicken. Anyway, whatever. Whatever the nose is, I can't. In fact, it's got no beak. There you go. I don't know what the beak looks like. I can't remember how you do a beak. Oh, it's like a that's pointy a parrot. Thing. That's yeah. a parrot, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so it's <laughs> it's like that on top of your head, and it's just like lolling around. You can now have leather armor equivalent uh, protection on your head. <laughs> oh my god, I've got like an alive undead chicken helmet. helmet. On my head. <laughs> Bro. Uh, oh. Technically alive. Technically alive. Uh, I'm I'm sort as, of. Just... Technically animated, Jim. I wouldn't say alive. And, animated. Yeah. All right. So that's what you get, Tom. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Alive. Watched him re yeah, okay. raise something back from the dead, basically, right? And yeah. we're all just okay with this. Well, I okay. think a lot of at that at that point, like you hear this kind of like ch -ch 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 from the distance, and you're not entirely sure what the fuck's going on. But this is definitely not the weirdest thing you've like all seen today. But it is quite disconcerting. Um, so yeah, you no, nobody else but you lot saw this. 
uh, but Ziggy saw this as well, and he saw like blinking and just going and pointing, going uh, like that, like it's completely outside of his ken. What just happened? Um, yeah, a little bit like that. So yeah, you all saw him basically bring a chicken back from the dead, and I'm not sure how any of you feel about that, but the, I guess it's now put a pin in it and let's just deal with the matter of hand. Um, yep, that's it, Tom. I'm, I'm, I'm like. I'm really, I'm so happy, but I'm not <laughs> right now. Your monkey paw curled there, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's, let's come back to this one later. <laughs> I'm getting a bit in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this, is a, this is a team meeting for later. <laughs> I'm just sending you all uh, messages on the Vagabond Diaries. Uh, what's that thing? Okay, so next up is Bondo. Bondo, you're up, sir, I believe. Oh, is it Dell or Bondo? I can't remember. It's Bondo next, right? Kind um, <coughs> Dell first, Ratty second, I'm third. Oh, this was kind of narrative until Tom got involved. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's go Dell next and then Bondo, and yeah, we can work it out. Though. What are you going like, to do? Like, have folks? a second to just stare. I'm just like staring at the chicken, and then I just like shake it <coughs> off, and I'm like, okay, whatever. This is not the weirdest thing I've seen even today. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. Although, 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 put a pin in it. Let's talk about it later. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. I just want to ask: Is every how's every like, other than that? <laughs> how's every? Is anybody hurt? Is anybody hurt? Um, you look around. At, when you, you're not a doctor, but you can appraise that most of your lot are still standing. Um, there does seem to be a couple of villagers um, that look like they've, had, they've been hit. Um, you can you see sort of like what you think is the body of Widow Larue uh, lying oh, about a good 10, 15 yards away. Um, and the dwarves here were sort of like trying to scramble back over. Uh, the vast water has been kicked up and is washing around. Definitely whoever's in this building is gone. Um, you do see here screaming, you do see people running out uh, from Hector Brioche's. You also see the people that are on watches, because you've got excellent vision, are sort of like coming back over the fences and are now sort of like coming, running back towards the uh, center of town, well not center of town, but towards like Hector Brioche's place, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. The Can I look something. up, do I see anything or hear anything else incoming? <clears throat> not right now, you don't, no. Okay, uh, I wanna tell them like, I wanna point <laughs> and say three came from that direction. They came from that direction. Okay. Um, and I don't see anything happening right now, like any other incoming. I don't know what to do though. I mean, my instinct is to help like wounded, like yeah, that or like you can civilians. Definitely, you can definitely try and help that. You can definitely go off and try and help. Yeah, I would like to do that. Maybe okay. check on the, yeah, just sure go thing. into the crater, I guess. Okay, put yourselves roughly within like a few inches on the board of where you'd like to be. Uh, Bondo, you can do the same. Uh, Ziggy will just sort of follow, I guess, as uh, he's not much help in any other respect. So Bondo, you can do what you want to do. Uh, this is like two rounds worth of helping. You see the, this gang over here, um, of the people that you know, sort of now are rushing to help people as well. You see Dr. Dasher starts running towards you. Maybe not as far as that, Bondo. I'd say around here, actually, please. Um, and Mary Louise is with you um, over here. Dr. Dasher, you see Dr. Dasher and, and uh, Wavy Davy are running towards you as well, like waving their arms, like, you know, trying to call you. Uh, Ziggy has gone over to the Widow LaRue's house for some reason. Uh, the blacksmith has come out and is like, looking at, he's come up to you actually, Ratty, um, and there's another villager here who's trying to help. The dwarves are now all piling back from their stations. Um, there wasn't that many left actually, that's probably all there was with these ones over here, I guess. Probably too many, but anyway, no, let's get rid of these two. I, think, I don't think there was many as that. Um, and yeah, there's probably one here as well. Uh, and then these, yeah, I think I've got too many down here. No, there's too many. Okay, that's fine. Um, cool, okay, so, with that, I guess, uh, Dr. Dasher runs towards you, Bondo. And he starts screaming, goes, what the bloody hell just hit us? My God, we've got, to, we've got to look after the people. Quickly, get the wounded and bring them over to Brioche's place. It's the furthest away from that hill or wherever the fuck those things came from. Darling, and he turns towards uh, Wavy Davy. He goes, yes? He goes, darling, try and uh, see you over there and get the wounded. Tell Ratty and uh, the elf, uh, that elf that seems to be with them, uh, to help out. We're going to meet at Brioche's and bring everybody there. He gives um, Wavy Davy a little kiss on his lips and just goes, um, for God's sake, be careful. 
and sort of runs back off to uh, to I guess create triage. Uh, you also see the elf here and what is Alan um, with his very sick. Oh no, Alan is not to be seen. Sorry, um, but the elf, that Albion fellow, and also uh, that other guy who is with the elf are over here. And they're sort of helping. Uh, they're talking to Hector, who's now giving them things to do, kind of thing, if that makes sense. Um, okay, that's that. Bondo, uh, what do you want to do? Right, sounds like a bloody good plan. Hang on, and I'll try and find people where I can search the houses around. Sure, okay. Here. So Mary Louise is with you, Doctor, and um, Wavy Davy is sort of going to help, and he, he goes to like the adjacent house, and you take one and takes the other. Uh, you see the dwarves on the other side over here are sort of milling around, not knowing what to do. Um, the, by the way, you know, look back in the stables and uh, the Widow LaRue's house has just been obliterated. There's like nothing left of it. Um, just tuck that away in your memory. Um, so you are now over here, I guess, Del. Uh, so yeah, Del and I guess actually Tom, you should probably be going now if we're going to do a loose narrative order. Tom, what are you going to do? I think that at the very, at the very least, <coughs> bringing Mabel back to Half-Life, yeah. I've now snapped out of it. And you definitely have snapped out of it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm also going to give right, you. A new, I mean, we, I'm also we, going we, to give you. I'm also going to give you a new spell. Um, you're going to. Yeah. You're going to call it. Bring it. Bring it back, you bastard. It costs you four magic points, and every time you cast it, you're going to have to roll um, a risk check, a risk test. It's four magic points. Of course, it's called okay. bring it back, you bastards. <laughs> I mean, is this this is basically like create zombie? Is this is kind, that a it's spell? Kind, basically, it's kind of like create undead like skeleton kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like that. Yeah, necromancy. Which, it's kind, it's necromancy, sir. Yeah. In fact, actually, while I remember it, please make a risk test of twenty five percent, please. <laughs> what? You got to make What's a risk. For? Well, you don't know yet, but it's it's a risk test. This is it, folks. He's an untrained, uh, unlicensed mage. And he flows with the, the the winds of magic, and it's completely random sometimes. So yeah, FYI. So roll a tw yeah, roll this. Let's see what happens. Ooh, twenty two! <laughs> you unlucky yeah. bastard. Um, do you have anything to help that? <laughs> you wanted to get over twenty five. I should have said that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, it's twenty-five, and it's under twenty-five. Surely, uh, well, it's, a 20, it's a twenty-five percent chance of something happening, not twenty-five percent success rate. So you can that spend. You can spend. Come on, this is. You can spend. Sucks. You can spend luck. Okay, I spend luck then, but yeah. I think I rolled <laughs> under twenty-five. That's no, you had to roll no, because you'd have to roll. Oh, I guess you'd have to roll under seventy-five. If you want to do it that way? The rule book usually states twenty-five or under. For these kind of things i'm just saying i'm going to stick with my ruling it's fine you spend luck it's now 35 so you don't usually i roll this for you by the way uh, but i thought i'd let you do the first one um so yeah okay that's fine so uh you don't nothing happens to you you feel a bit weird about the whole thing but you don't feel strange beyond that okay um yeah what do you want to do tom um well i just think we should get out of there You've gone off to get the rule book, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I can hear you. You're like, get him, Not... Tom. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Thomas. I didn't think you had a copy. <laughs> um, I feel like, yeah. So, um, so I'm just snapping out of it. Like, are we true. just getting out of there? <coughs> get out of here. We need to get out. We need to. I mean, we're, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place because. And then the only route out, we've got like a, a small army of evil undead bird thing. Are you saying this out loud to yourself, trying to get your gather your thoughts? Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. At that point, I, I at, that point, you hear, at that point, at that point, at that point, directly behind you, you, hear this. There's a what? And you turn around. The blacksmith has just dropped all of his tools that he's carrying in his arms, and he's just staring at you like, "What the fuck did he just say?" And he's now freaking out. He's just staring at you. Yeah, we didn't tell all of you, did we? Yeah, that way, that way, and I point down to the waterfall. Yeah, army of undead bird things, very nasty. <laughs> Not unlike this one on my head. The <laughs> this, this one of Mabel, I'm dead gonna, Mabel. I'm going to make a cool test for the blacksmith. Hang on a sec. <laughs> okay, let's just. 
Yeah, he dead faints in front of you. <laughs> he just like peels back and just faints. <laughs> just straight back, like literally like, and just literally he falls like, and just falls in front of you like that. And he faints on his back. Um, what are you gonna do, man? What else do you wanna do? You just made this grown burly man faint. I've, I've laid it out. We need to get out of here. We need to. Um, yeah. um, <coughs> you are there any boats on the water? Uh, make an initiative test, please. Um, you can plus. Uh, what's your? You got night vision, have you? Plus ten because you do have night vision, even even if it is limited. Yeah. So plus ten to your initiative test. Your initiative is thirty six right now, isn't it? So that's forty six. Yeah. Um, no, my initiative is. Oh no, you're right. It's thirty six. Sorry, you, you increased it. Yeah. yeah. So it's 46, we're under 54, that'll pass with luck no. if you want to. Would it? Yeah, you got oh, 46, yeah. so you got plus 10 with luck, the Go skill on, luck. Go on, I'm right. gonna risk my luck again. Your All luck right. your luck holds for the day, um, and you actually, you sort of look around going, well, oh, there aren't any boats, are there? And then suddenly you spy something, and it's actually on this sort of like jetty area over here. There is a whole, there's this weird sort of like ring thing that you noticed on stoning day. And it's actually like a net, and in it, there's a whole bunch of these kind of like big barrel things. And you remember somebody mentioning them as, uh, they're called escargot. Uh, and this, you don't know what that means, it's a funny language that they use up here, like pigeon, bretonian, and old worlder. But it's just escargot, and these a whole bunch of barrels, and you seem to remember there is like more than enough for like every person here, or certainly every person left standing here now anyway. Um, and they're just tied up on the riverbank. And you, the idea is that you something about like, they put like stuff in them, they, they put casks on top of them, they send them down the river, and it's the quickest way of them getting fresh pro produce down to La Maison Tal, and that's where people pick it up from. Like, the, people don't come here to trade, they pick up stuff from La Maison Tal, they send down the river or something weird like that. So it's very strange, but um, that's what they do. And there's something like, they, I don't know how it works, but they send it down river like this. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really enormous, like wooden things, basically. These wooden barrels. So we're basically going to have a Hobbit moment here. I'm not saying you're going to have a Hobbit <laughs> moment. I'm just saying that's that's there, dude. <laughs> I mean, that's my instinct as Ratty. I'm like, because we can't fight our way through the bird, bird things. We need to just <coughs> go. Um, I'm going to grab the others and i'm going to point at them i'm going to point at them and go we need to get out of here <laughs> we need <laughs> we need to get him we need to escar go all right um, <laughs> very good all right you start you start rushing yeah. through and saying that um i'm going to tell you now there's no leadership in the world that's going to help you on that one uh nobody's listening but people are just freaking out panicking or trying to help um okie dokie uh this has been like four rounds okay uh everybody make an initiative test please um dell you get plus 10 and so does bondo bondo gets plus 20 actually 96 who's that <laughs> that's a critical failure me that's a critical me. success oh critical success okay so dell so, so dell you hear like yeah. you, you hear nothing you think it's and actually not only that but you are now convinced nothing is going to happen and that was the only time it was going to like explode. This is a critical failure, folks, which is very bad, usually. On rolls like this, it's the best way of getting them because they're usually innocuous things. But the a 0105 is a critical success. Um, so, Dell, you actually think uh, there's nothing coming, and then you hear a whistling, and you are pretty sure the whistling is heading straight to Hector Brioche's house. And you're pretty sure that you think you even see three objects flying towards high in the sky that's going to land on Hector Brioche's house. That's what you see, Dell. Um, Bondo, you, however, see three more of these projectiles, and they're sort of like now carpet bombing their way through the village. And you see that these things are probably going to land bridge, uh, building here, and possibly also building here where you are, quite close to where you are there. One, two, three. Oh. Like that, yeah. But that you, that's where you think they're going because you made a critical success. You're pretty sure, and you're pretty sure that's going to hit in about 10 seconds, in about a round and a half. More or less. This is Alan. Oh, this is Alan. This, this is Alan. This is like two rounds. I'm going to give you. This is Alan Gascoigne's place, by the way, where he lives with his wife. That fighter we talked about, you met at the party, and you swap notes with yes, him. He's pretty cool. The old seasoned warrior. The seasoned warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> Del, you are right, convinced. So we've got Wavy Davey, Sorry, Del. Is, Del, Mary just Louise. to reiterate yeah. it, Del, you are convinced all three are heading this way. 
like that. Right, but I had a critical failure. <laughs> you, had, you had a critical no. failure, which is why you are convinced that's where they're heading. Right. Okay. But what is, sorry, what is Bondo? You don't Bondo know. Over you, here? you don't know what Oh, Bondo's I don't know. You're right. You don't you're know right. My character doesn't know. You are convinced that's happening this way on to. Okay. So role play if you dare. Um, new round, Dell, starting up with you. <sighs> no, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bastard, aren't I? Um, Where are okay, you? Okay, if I'm Where convinced that it's going to hit. Yeah, you're absolutely. You're convinced. You would, you would place money on this. You place your dog, like, life on this. Well, it's all the way the hell over there, too. So it is. I start pointing in the air and saying, it's going to hit. Okay. Uh, but like, there's not enough time. I can't make it there. <clears> you well, you um, think it, you think it's going to hit in about three or you think it's going to hit about fifteen twenty seconds. It's really high in the air. You reckon you've got time? You could probably run there and get everybody out of that area. You could save the day. In fifteen seconds? Yeah. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you can run pretty fast and pretty far. I'm going to say that you think you can get there and pull people out of that uh, out of that area. Let's see if you're gonna rock play this one, Del. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I would do. I would, I would try and I would sprint. I, okay. would, I would just say it's co coming from over there, and I would just like go. All right. So you start um, sprinting this oh, direction over oh. here, and you're just yep, running flat out, dog following. Okay, uh, that is your round. Um, please make a leadership test as well, please. Actually, I'm gonna get you 58. What's your? Oh, 38. What's your leadership? 32. I'm going to give you a bonus of plus 10 because you're so emphatic about this. Uh, so yeah. yeah, so you say that and Wavy Davy stops and starts back and starts running back and goes, oh, Dasher, darling, and starts running towards you with you this direction over here. Uh, he's now running to, like kind of pretty much where you are. Dasher turns around and goes, what the bloody hell are you shouting at? And they all, all of them start looking this direction and start backing off towards this way like that. Uh, including the elf, uh, the Bretonian, and also that like thief guy that you met earlier, that charlatan. Oh, God. Um, Hector Brioche is now coming out. Sadly, you see Hector Brioche and his entire family uh, walking out of... Um, I'll put Hector over here. This is, wasn't Hector, but it is now. Hector's now walking out of his house. His family are with him, which is really upsetting, and the children and the wife and everything. And they're just sort of walking out going, what now? What now? Like that, and they're on the porch where you all have those drinks. Uh, this is pretty bad, Del. I w we just need to get the hell out of this entire space. Pretty much. So uh, next up, I'm going to stop you right there. Next up is Ratty. Ratty, it's your go, sir. Ziggy is doing his own thing. So, his own thing. So I'm going to... I'm just trying to, you know, getting as many people's attention as possible. You know, lots of waving arms mm -hmm. and kind of like... Look at me, look at me, chicken on head. This way, this way. I'm going to kind of hustle it down to where the escargot are. Okay. And are they like all, did you say they're all like sort of roped up? Are they yeah, all kind they, of... they're roped up over here. Um, so they look, it looks like literally like, a, like a, one of those like nets you get in the ocean, like that stops like people swimming out too far. Do you know what I mean? They sometimes yeah. drop them in boys. To stop them, people going right. too far out into riptides and whatnot. Um, it's like that, right. basically. But it's covering. It's like it's looping from here all the way around to there. Yeah, I see it. I yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm as I'm running down, <coughs> I'm gonna. I, you know, basically, I'm trying to. You know, um, I guess maybe a leadership test or something. Yeah, you can do that. What do you want to do to tell them to get to the escargots? We need to, yeah, basically I'm shouting, we need to. Tommy, um, test out there, mate. What are you shouting? Everybody wants to know. <laughs> what? You cut oh, out. What did you say? We need to get out of here. We need to get, you know, we yeah. need to. Um, so I'm, I'm basically shouting, you know, let's get to the river. We need to get out of here. All right, cool. Um, Make a leadership test. You have luck. Um, not going to say much else apart from that. You don't have public speaking or any kind of leadership leader, skills. My leadership is fucking abysmal. Now, Neil. <laughs> yeah. Um, my leadership is twenty-four, so I believe I've got to roll under twenty-four. <laughs> yeah, but is the, that correct? the other thing was a risk test, dude. Um, so it was a little different. It wasn't a skill check. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. I'm standing by that. Bollocks. 87 is a big no. failure. Okay, you start flapping your arms, flapping your like, you know, your um, 
uh, what do you call it, your bathrobe and flapping the chicken on your head. And you sort of like in there, like running past everybody. Are you running straight there, sir? Are you running straight across this way? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you're about here-ish. Um, cool, okie dokie. Uh, and you start flapping, you, you don't know if anybody's listening, you don't really care, but you, you can feel like you're, maybe you're doing some good, you don't know. Um, <laughs> Bondo, it's now your go. Very quickly, Bondo, you have seen Ziggy has rushing across his, because the dwarves are sort of milling about not knowing what to do. He's now screaming at them and trying to, obviously he's trying to rush across the river, uh, the bridge to try and get them to pay attention and like get the fuck out or whatever he's, he's trying to do. He's clearly trying to help them like work out what the fuck's going on and, and come back. And he's now on, his foot is literally stepping onto the bridge. Uh, you also see, um, you sort of glance around you very quickly. You see Wavy Davy here, Dr. Dasher there. You see both Wavy Davy is turned and running with Dell. Um, they're just on the edge of this, they're just on this side of the building here. Uh, you also see Ratty on the other edge of the, of the building there. Um, in your head, you do a quick calculation. Oh, this thing, Lord. yeah, you know exactly what's about to happen. Just saying. What do you want to do, mate? Yeah, I do. I'm <coughs> just, yeah. Decisions, decisions. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, hang on. This is a bastard, bastard decision. Um, right. <clears throat> Ziggy, Ratty, get out of there. Dale, it's gonna land on you. Get to the river, now. I grab uh, Mary Louise's hand and run in this direction. This away this from, the, sort of on a parallel yeah, line, okay. That way. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So yeah. You, the, I, I, love, I love how much of a ladies man Bondo has become. He really is well. quite dapper and dashing now, isn't he? He really is. Yeah, digging it, man, digging it. Um, okay, dokie. Um, right, please roll a leadership test, plus 20, because of your knowledge of such things. And also that you're barking like a battle tongue-esque short sharp instructions in layman's terms but you're pretty articulate mm. about this kind of shit so roll your dice sir leadership you got um well you have luck. vagabonds are counting on you sir Ooh, 72 oh, almost oh. yeah sorry mate 72 my leadership is plus 20. hang on i can't see very well <coughs> Suspense us. My leadership is 46. that's 66. So 46. holy fuck with luck you'll 66. just make it Holy, I'll go with that then. Your luck holds. Fuck me, Jim. That was awesome. Great drama. Digging it. Not even not even really upset that everybody survives this. Okay, so all of you <laughs> all of so all of you that are running and fleeting, you hear this this shout of instructions. Very short and very sharp. The voice is Bondo's, but there's a sort of unwavering command that just does something almost to all of you. And you, you instantly sort of believe whatever he's saying. And one of the things, the last thing he says is, duck and cover, like that. And all of you instinctively dive to the ground. Uh, literally like, like head first, wherever you are. And actually Ratty, you keep running and then just sort of like dive skid over here. The dog even veers off. Everybody but Ziggy, who's now crossing the bridge over there. Um, and as you dive to the ground, which you're not entirely sure why you're doing it, all of these, all these things just explode. Um, so this building here, Alan has actually stepped out and is sort of like turning around, is coming around here and the building explodes just after he sort of like erupts, he rushes from it. Uh, the Ziggy is rushed onto the bridge. Uh, Bondo, you sort of like turn around the last second and this ordinance just hits the bridge and you just see Ziggy just like pinwheeling out and he just lands in the river, his body lands in the river. You have no idea what happened to him. Um, over here, there's another explosion in the back and you hear more cries and screams as another set of ordnance comes raining down. Like that. Um, Whoa, shit, what happened there? Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, Vagabonds, one more round, I believe. And yeah, let's see what the fuck happened here. Uh, Del, it's your round. Hey, sorry, okay, I'm still like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> Okay, so I'm. <coughs> oh, yeah, oh, okay, so where am I? In, what is, where am I? Where's my You're over here on the ground next to Wavy Davy. Okay, doggo. Okay. Yeah, doggy's, um, doggy's with you. All of you heard this um, shout from Bondo and you all reacted accordingly without even knowing what the hell he's talking about. Uh, the explosions are very close. Right. Are they, you, you don't, none of you, are, miraculously, none of you are hurt. Alan Gascoigne has been knocked to his feet as well, but he's seemingly alive. Bondo, you and Mary Louise are far enough away from that explosion not to get really injured, but that building has been blown to shit. 
Uh, Ratty, you dive forward here, so you're next to the, you can see the escargots bobbing around. You can also see uh, these guys have all taken a step back and they're all freaking out. Dr. Dash is rushing towards uh, Dell and also to um, uh, Wavy Davy. And these ones are coming over here. Uh, the two dwarves that were over there, uh, you don't, can't really see them, sorry. But the family is safe and are crossing over to this area, rushing forward as well with Hector Brioche. Um, cool. What okay. are you, so it's your go, Dell. Um, can I ask? Can I ask which direction is the water? Is the river flowing? Um, it flows. It going... uh, no, it flows this direction. Oh, so it flows this arrow. That's the way it goes. So if you go into okay. the escargots, it would go so down. So if Ziggy, if Ziggy's body's here and I'm here, <coughs> I feel like I could get to him. Yeah. But I also Zig can't swim. So Ziggy's, never mind. Um. <laughs> yeah, Ziggy's body. You saw Ziggy's body dive you into rivers. this. Yeah. yeah. You saw it dive into there. Wait, the dog can swim. Can the dog swim? You don't know. It's a dog. Those doggos. <laughs> don't don't paddle. Um, I mean, do I see his body? Do I see his body like floating? No, Is you he don't. Just, like, out? He, like, he just, just went into the water. You have no idea what happened to him. Okay. Well, if I can't see him. Uh. Oh no. Anyways. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, I no, tried no, to think this. about it. <laughs> I. You know. It's the, again. It's the thought. Oh man. I don't even know where to. So I mean, I heard him saying. I heard him saying, "Get into the river, like over here, right?" Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Escar, go out of here. <laughs> yeah, you, you suddenly get the pun. You're like, oh, oh yeah. My yeah. A material, okay? So that yeah. was... Like... It was pretty good, Tom. I, I Listen, if nobody else likes it, I'm going to say, uh, go on, Lynn. That was one of the best you've done. That was really good. Thanks, I really buddy. Like I mean, you set it up. I just, I just hit it home. I know, but, dude, but it is a team sport, but honestly, sometimes people do shine, and I think it was great. I think it was great. <laughs> um, I would start... Can I start making my way to this area? Yep. Um... That's cargo. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna reiterate what I was hearing the other guy saying, which is like head towards the river. We got to get into these. That's cargo. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You can do that. Um, cool. Do you want to move yourself towards there? Put yourself kind of close to where is you this want me? to be. That's you over there. Yeah, you're pretty fast though. You've got like movement five or something crazy. Like that. And I have a dog, which is. <laughs> you are really on that dog. Okay, so that dog is coming with you. Next up is, well, it would be Ziggy, but we have no idea what's happened to him. Okay, next up is Dr. Dasher and Wavy Davy. They pull you toward, he pulls, they hug each other, like briefly embrace. They run hand in hand, like running back towards the brioches and they start shouting something. Um, Alan is now rushing toward, he's buying you Bondo. He's now pointing, he's like going, no, no, Fran, no. Like that, he's like screaming towards this burning wreck of his house. Um, luckily he had the good sense to come like with some armor and his, his two-handed sword across his back but he's just like screaming trying to get towards like towards his house Mary Louise is now like tugging her arm and pointing at Alan um, and just sort of literally just saying like you know help him I guess or something like that the other dwarves two yeah. of these dwarves here have like turned tail and they're now rushing away uh, one dwarf is coming towards you as, as a villager is as well over here um, and you also see the law master and the uh, the blacksmith is nowhere to be seen. Um, you see the lawmaster is amongst them here, as, as is the leader of Bardock and um, what are the name of the other dude now. I can't remember his name now. Whatever. The other, the two dwarfs, the two dwarf leaders are there with him. I can't find their miniatures. Fuck it. Fuck it. Um, I just see this one duplicate. It's fine. All right. So the two dwarves are with them over here as well. Um, and this is kind of like the majority of seemingly who's left with a couple of the one villager who's now rushing into the night apparently completely freaked out these two dwarves are, are trying to are like circling over here uh, towards the brioche family uh, residence and you have the two dwarves here and here who have also now joined you and luckily they're okay too what was I about to do there nope. there you go cool uh, what do you want to do going to uh, restrain Alain, okay. tell him there's no point, there's okay. nothing we can do, it's it's not, yeah, don't okay. go in there. You sort of grab don't him, you out. grab him by like, the forearm and you just like, and his, and his shoulder and you just like scream at him, there's nothing you can do and he basically just sort of goes limp and sort of like completely just lets you like push him around and he's just completely, he's completely in shock and you sort of, he stumbles and you and Mary, Lou, Lou, Mary Louise managed to push um, them towards, uh, sorry, him towards the escargot. You can see ahead of you, Ratty is there with Del, uh, the dog has arrived. Um, Dr. Dasher and um, Wavy Davy have joined up. You see the elf, you see that chumley guy, you see um, the other guy's name you can't remember, the sort of like that charlatan-y type poet -y guy, he was bad poetry. Hector Brioche and his family there and the two dwarves and a couple of the dwarves are trying to make their way uh, over the brioche wall towards you. 
uh, like that. So this is like the remnants of whoever's left in the village, basically, which isn't that many people. Um, yeah. Uh, I feel like it's now it's now Dell's go again, right? Pretty much. Okay. <coughs> I mean, I'm still making my way. Uh, so what? Like, oops. <laughs> um, okay, I give up. Um, <laughs> Getting in, I mean, what, so what, can you describe again what we're seeing over here um, in the river? Um, these are like barrels, huge barrels. Yeah. That have like these lids that can be, they look like the lids are on I, hinges, like they can be tightened up and pulled on. Um, so, yeah. Which is a bit unusual, but it's obviously some kind of fabrication. They look like, they look like escargot shells, like they look like snail shells, but they're made of wood and they bobble in the water and they're big enough to, for quite a lot of, like a person or two people or goods they're not really designed for people elf obviously. and a dog <laughs> elf and a dog could totally fit in that yeah a little elf and a yeah, dog yeah I'm, totally. I'm you know i kind of feel like this is the fastest way like the hell out of here is in the water like making our way downtown yeah you you uh. also you also don't know anything else that's happened that the other the other dudes might know just fyi if you if you've been talking whilst i was setting up if there's any other information i don't think they've told you that yet so just fyi that okay um, but these are escargots over here, and there's seemingly enough for everybody. Um, you notice Alan, uh, sorry, not no, Cecil de Chomley, who apparently is some like Duke of uh, Vortingham or something. Uh, there's a small child, like one of the brioche family boys, is like running towards the escargots, and you just see him just like grab the little kid and just pull him back, like he's by his arm, and just sort of overtake, uses him like a slipstream, and just overtakes oh. him and rushes straight to the. Um, the far escargot over here and just starts that's like a titanic moment that guy is... that's a what <laughs> it's a titanic, titanic that's a titanic yeah yeah that's right it's a titan i didn't i didn't realize what billy i just zane did it. it's a billy zane i'm just billy zane the fuck out of that yeah, billy, so he, yeah he, just, he, he just billy zane it. sorry yeah i'm gonna i'm hoping okay. that guy meets the sticky end i'm gonna try and make that happen nice okay so he starts jumping in the dwarves now like they're conferring with hector hector looks around and looks at you ratty um you can see ratting goes oh god what do we do like that um ah. is that my go like this is your firstly, go yeah. are the escargo have they been released because i was thinking that needed to happen no they haven't been released yes, they're tied up they're tied up, yeah, but they're, but yeah, tie, so but they're tied up. Act. They're tied up by one this massive net, not individually. They're bobbing around quite happily. Right. So, is there a, an axe or something to cut them <coughs> loose? Uh, I need to find a way to cut them loose, basically. Okay. So, make initiative. A real quick check, which is initiative. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Um. Well. Hang on, you know, I've got actually, um, I can actually, all right, I go up to the rope, Yeah. okay, I'm going to put my hand on it, mm -hmm. um, and I think very, very hot thoughts. Like hot, and like, I, you know, like Michelle Pfeiffer hot? Well, like Mary like, Louise, what's the face? Mary Louise Butterfield, that kind of hot, like that's, that's, <laughs> my, that's, that's Michael yeah, Fassbender hot, dude, that's uh, super hot, that's like a supernova hot. Yeah, I'm, and... I, I say, burn you, burn you bastard, which is, I mean, I don't normally say that when I do magic light, but basically I've got magic light where I create the flame. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no, I create it from... Isn't you create it, like, it from a spidge, man, or noodle or something. Yeah. Noodle comes and sits in your head. I, I summon spidge up onto my hand That's and it. then yeah. position him like an acetylene torch over the, over the um, <laughs> rope. And okay. then I say, burn you bastard. Okay. So not you, Spidge, but the, yeah. the rope, you understand. <laughs> it, and, it squeaks, um, turns, and opens its, opens its mouth, I guess, and just goes, or its little head, it comes on the top of its head or something, isn't it? Yeah, like, like a little, uh, isn't it like a blue or green? Is it a green flame? I it's like a Bunsen burner, I think. <laughs> it appears on its head and hopefully will burn through the rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll let it burn through the well, road. it's starting to at which point like Hector goes what the hell are you doing oh oh god yes yes everybody get to the escargos and you suddenly realize what you're doing and you suddenly realize that it's a good job that this thing is going to take a little while because otherwise you just <laughs> rip out the nets and they all float off and you wouldn't be able to get the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah that hadn't occurred to me i know i want everyone i, I do i am <coughs> doing lots of waving and jumping 
like <clears throat> with the part of me that's um spidge over the rope i'm doing lots of waving and pointing and like here yeah yeah um okay so whoever hasn't got it cool okay so at this point everybody surges towards and actually the brioche is like you know the children get in wavy davy and dr dashi come up and they're pretty well organized even though it's chaos they're helped one by one into it pretty quickly and everybody pretty much finds at escargo the, the assassin sorry we're talking about the um the the dwarf not assassin the dwarf um leader um, comes over, helps the law master. That's it. He's not an assassin. He's a law master. Helps the law master into one as well. Um, Cecil de Chomney's already in one because he's a coward. Uh, the elf mercenary <laughs> comes over here uh, with that uh, human dude that's with her all the time as well. And pretty much one by one they fill up till everybody's filled this up. Um, and then of course Doctor Dash and everybody as well. You you and the doggo can jump into one if you want, Del. Blue. Yes. Yeah. You, Sorry, you broke it up. No, me. it's okay. You and uh, you and the dog can jump into one as well. Mary yes, Louise we will quite happily come with you, um, Bondo, I guess. And everybody can pretty much fill it up. It takes about two rounds. And at this point, Ratty, you notice the the flame is starting to do its job, um, and also that you can see uh, pretty well that the rope right is back. starting to give. Um, hey, Jim. So Mary Louise has jumped into an escargot with you. Um, all of you are pretty much jumping into these little escargos. Um, anybody making an initiative test minus 10, please? <coughs> so if we located oh Ziggy my. yet? That's Sorry, Neil, 17? have we located Ziggy yet? Just going to get to that. So that's a failure fight. Is that Tom failure or is that Blue? That's me. Sorry, that's is, Del. Is that a failure? 69. That's failure. Yeah, that's a failure. Yep. Tom, you're up next. Minus 10, please, sir. And Jim, initiative minus 10, please, mate. Oh, God. Uh, 31. Uh, you could pass 31. that with luck. No, I failed that. Tom, you could pass that with um, luck. I passed that. No, I passed that without luck, mate. Minus 10. No, it's mi day. minus 10 to everybody's oh, initiative because you're, right, all, getting, you're doing, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, preoccupied okay. and whatnot. I'm going to use, all right, I will use luck, please. Yep, okay, you it. lose luck and your luck holds. You still have luck for the day. You're still lucky. Um, right, as you sort of get in, you're still, you're still, you're, you're half in, half out, the last escargot here next to Cecil de Chomley. Uh, you notice um, that Ziggy has like surfaced and tries to grab the side of Cecil's. Cecil freaks out and then brings out this like little knife. He's got this little pure silver knife and he just starts like trying to hack uh, Ziggy's hand and he starts screaming and Ziggy just immediately slips under and just carries on through the river and he just disappears out of sight but you, you sort of see this as you're slowly burning through this rope and Cecil's got this like this dagger and as he sort of like he, he as he brings it out it sort of shimmers blue which is really weird and he sort of like starts tapping at um, the fingers of uh, Ziggy and Ziggy sort of immediately lets go and, and just disappears under the water again disappears from view uh, nobody else saw that because everybody else is preoccupied. You're the only person that saw that was, was Cecil de Chomley. Oh. Definitely a Titanic moment. Yep. Yeah. What a bastard. <laughs> what a bastard. What a bastard. Wouldn't it be great if Billy Zane actually turned up next next time and actually helped me? I, d I actually know Billy. <laughs> I haven't seen Billy. I haven't seen Billy for a long time, but I do know him. I did a film yeah, with him. Yeah, is he okay? Yeah, he's no, great. you did. Oh, you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was in a film with him. Billy's, <laughs> Billy was a real gentleman to me. I liked. I actually have a lot of time for Billy. He treated me really, really well in the film we did. So I got a lot of time for him. Um, but yeah, I'll see if he's free. <laughs> he's not going to be free. <laughs> <laughs> you never Billy, know. Billy, he did. He's not. <laughs> Can you imagine? Billy's own telling it. Well, uh, you know, listen, Vin Diesel does it. Why not Billy's own? All right, so, so anyway, uh, I think that's your go pretty much over. Uh, Bondo, so anything you're doing specifically? Uh, just trying to secure the barrel. Do I get a chance to try and grab at Ziggy on the way past, or is that. No, you don't know he's there. You don't see him, man. You, didn't, you, you failed your test. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, fair enough. Okay, just do my best to make sure the barrel's, well, seaworthy or whatever, river worthy. Yeah, it's pretty, it looks pretty um, sturdy. You help yeah. Mary Louise in. Um, she's also pretty capable. You don't really, like, help her in. You're just being nice and polite. Um, cool. Everybody seems to be ready to go. At that point, uh, you do hear the... And you see these other, you see these other three arcs coming back in again. 
and this time like one is definitely heading for the brioches one is heading actually kind of the area you're all in and then one is heading this direction over here and they're again sort of speeding their way through on this like crazy parabolic arc quite high um they basically carpet bombed the village in a way yeah, which is pretty, yeah it's pretty heavy um yeah so this is a yeah, new round i guess um you ratty you're definitely going to take precedence because this is the round that the rope is going to break everybody seems to be uh, everybody that was jumping in seems to be in their um respective um little escargos um yeah at this point by the way uh, imagine sorry this is a bit of a clusterfuck i'm sorry but imagine everybody is now in their escargos okay i'm gonna have to move you over here because this thing is a mess i'm gonna put you down <laughs> as the escargos and that's how we're gonna, so we're gonna play this a little bit um so if we use yeah we'll just use this i guess as yeah so are you, what are you gonna do tom are you ready to rock well i'm i guess my plan is to you know to burn the rope and then get into the nearest one okay is the nearest one empty to me or has someone taken it no no it's totally empty there's actually a few spare because like um there's less people than there are escargos okay so that that's my plan is basically get that rope burn i mean the other thing is the is the net going to drift away of its own accord or is someone gonna <clears throat> it looks like it clear, you're like you're, you're so no engineer no Bondo's already shouted out saying it's the right thing to do. He had a good check and look. And basically, the second you release this, it should from the top down. Oh. Tom? Okay. Yeah. It should from. Always the... trust in Bondo. Bondo knows. Bondo does know, man. Um, or from the top down, these barrels should one by one from the back going forwards peel off and just be released. So the last one going will actually be this one over here. The first one will be Cecil's and then yours actually afterwards. So, so when the when the rope goes, I'm getting in. But that's you, know, you got to tell me that, and then sure I'll thing. go. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's the plan. Nothing else you want to do. Okay, so okay, you, the rope the rope starts giving to the point where you can just yank it. You jump into the escargot, turn around, and just yank it. And at that point, it literally like one by one, like a almost like synchronized diving, <laughs> like swimming. These escargots just twist a little bit and then bobble, and then the river just takes it. And then one by one, they just go. <laughs> out through here and start willing their way down uh, the river. As you do so, you start seeing the ordnance starts hitting and it just explodes the fuck out of Hector Brioche's place. And this enormous explosion that actually triggers off the brandy store that's next to it. And it is some Michael Bay shit, folks. Uh, oh, this thing oh also God. explodes here, showering you all with soil and mud. Oh, no. And over here, like these two houses get completely blown up. And your attention sort of drifts over. After everybody's in there, little escar goes. You're not moving too fast, but you're moving, you can feel that the speed is picking up. You suddenly look out and you realize that you can see something in the distance, marching, or seemingly marching through the village. Uh, you hear the screams and you hear gunfire of these two dwarves that were sort of running this direction as they're firing at something in the distance. And through the sort of wreckage and the smoke, you see uh, a legion of skeleton warriors as they start uh, rushing, charging their way through the village towards the river edge here. And at that point, folks, we are going to stop proceedings. <laughs> Did it sink oh in yet? <laughs> Did it hit no, you yet? No, <laughs> like insane. One more time, folks. Just going to say, that's the direction of the river. <laughs> And that's yeah. the direction. There you go. I don't need to explain it. Oh, all right. Cool, folks. So, how you think? You are right? You are doing okay? I didn't take a... Uh, Ziggy, uh, F in the chat? F in the chat, <laughs> in the chat. I don't I, know. I didn't take a single fate point from you lot. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Might have taken a character. I mean, didn't take a fate no, point. This week. <laughs> you don't have to do it every episode, Neil. It's not like part of the... I need know, to read the rules again, necessary. clearly. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it, folks. So, what the hell, huh? By the way, Ratty, just very quickly as a, a caveat, you don't know where Ziggy is. You had a quick look around and realized you can't see Ziggy. And, like, come back okay. up again. Like, you don't, you don't, he's just gone, as far as you're aware. I had been looking for him. Yes, okay, you have. That's yeah. good. Cool. All right, folks, I think that's a pretty good fucking place to stop. Um, yeah, yeah, that was pretty awesome. All right, who wants to do the honors? I feel it's your turn, Tom, because I kind of wronged you on many levels today. In a, in a good time. I think <laughs> I did it last time. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over Yay. to Blue. Really? Yeah, I'll flip it. <laughs> All right. Wow! Fucking hell! It's beautiful. Yay. 
<laughs> All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. We're back on Tuesday. It's awesome, isn't it? We're back again on yeah. back again on Tuesday. Tuesday. Re7. Re7. And then hopefully Thursday, I believe, maybe late Thursday, depending. And then on the 3rd of July, I have my next signing, which if you don't know, if you want to come over and hang, it's on Twitch. It'll be 8 o'clock till probably whenever. I think we may be doing two signings. I may I may be doing two signings after Check with Blue. Um, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> because like I'm really overwhelmed and really grateful that a lot of yeah. people are really interested in my work and would like me to sign something for them. So it's a lot. So we may break it into two nights, folks. Um, but definitely on Saturday, come and ask questions about work, about my roles and characters, and I'll happily answer whatever I can. All right. Thanks very much, folks. Thank you to the Vagabonds. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you to the mods. And thank you very much to anybody still with us and still listening. Cricket. Cricket, cricket. All right, folks, take it easy. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>